say when. Uh, when, sorry. Go over. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I have to readjust everything. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Hello, welcome. <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Brenna. I am your contingency planning DM, and welcome to Tales from the Catacombs. This is our tabletop RPG adventure that we are thrilled to share with you. Uh, this... Oops, sorry, wrong one. There it is. This game uses the Dungeons and Dragons D20, or sorry, the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition D20 rules and system, and the setting is a homebrew based off of the rock musical Razia's Shadow by Forgive Durden. We have a brief introduction to the setting that you can read at your leisure, and I hope you will, so that you can be as immersed in the world as our players are. Without further ado, Please enjoy this episode of Razia's Shadow, A Thousand Year Interlude. Let's recap. Session 14, Lunch and Learn. After Viola accepted her personal assignment from the Avenger and checked on Buttercup, the novices had lunch and then gathered their information. Snow determined that the strange blood was not magical in and of itself, but rather it was being preserved with necromantic magic. The blood on Snow's skin left him feeling exhausted, and magic wouldn't clean it from his hands. They expected more answers would come from their emissaries, Moonridge and Vaughn, and from the lead acolyte, Aglin. At novice command offices, they met Bria Han, the third novice emissary. She discouraged them from bothering Moonridge on his day off, and she hadn't seen Vaughn since they returned. What Bria could help with was a means to get to Hazelford and still get paid. She suggested, she suggested they help the Peace Watch with missing shipments in Hazelford. She would prepare a request for them. The novices thought through how they might approach Aglin next, since he was their only confirmation about the state of the crown. After some consideration, they decided to wait until the next day so they could rest and better prepare for what might happen. The rest of the day was spent in the library next to Stormwatch Tower. Stayin' and Snow had research to do. Bo found a kindly tutor and a potentially kindred spirit. But Viola had no interest in these studies and wandered outside, where she came across the guard Ziva and her friends. They invited her to explore the magical, technological wonders of Kepner's command. So we are going to do a little bit of... I. I imagine it's going to be a little bit of backtracking so we can go see what Viola's been up to while Bo was deep in his studies uh, for the rest of the day. And Bo made, if you didn't see, you should, Bo made some excellent headway uh, with his new arcane studies. So we're going to jump over to Kepner's Command where uh, Viola was just led inside. Uh, once again, someone putting their arms around her shoulder and she's <laughs> probably at least a few inches taller but it's all meant in you know good spirit so viola you are led inside of this large building kind of the patchwork of materials used to create it um you enter this entrance hall well you go up this little flight of stairs and you enter this entrance hall um it's this wooden foyer it has various framed drawings on the walls that look kind of like schematics um you see some little creations, these like little metal cog work, like clockwork creations, um, cogs and screws, um, things that look, you see some other things that look as simple as like a hand mirror or like a pot of paint. There's this wide variety of things. Um, Ziva leads you in and she's with this little crowd of people. She leads you in further and you are in this hallway there are doors on either side, just a few of them. All of them are closed. You can hear little sounds coming from any given one. Uh, there's drifting smells of various types. Some of it kind of has like a stinging, kind of oily smell. But also from elsewhere, you're getting this drifting of almost like a, like someone's cooking maybe or uh, preparing something, something much nicer than whatever smells like oil. Um, and she explains to you that this floor is kind of more for accommodations, for visitors like yourself. Uh, people can come in and visit, but all of the, the real heavy duty kind of training and testing and things like that will happen on other floors. Um, so she 
leads you further down the hall, and there is a stairwell leading down. And she will she will ask you. Um, she says, "So there are there are a lot of things that we can show you." And before I get ahead of myself, because if I start talking, I will not stop. Um, I just want to make sure you're not like running low on time or anything, because you can always come back another time if you need to, and I could show you all manner of things then. Um, one, give me just one second. Let me think about it for a second. Uh, hey, Bo, how much longer <laughs> do you think you're going to be uh, doing your studies things for? Wait, how far back are you reversing the timer here? So it's probably about an hour or so into, um, like, when Bo got settled with Maria and they started going, it's probably about an hour after that. You're... Would he still have uh, it Maria's... by then? What? Would he still have it by then, then? Because I think when he was messaging Snow about looking it up, he was down to like his last final moments. Like hour? Yeah. Really? I mean, he it cast it back in Nora's house. <laughs> oh. And by lunch, they still had like two hours left and then you guys they took an hour lunch <laughs> and then we went and talked and then walked I'll say <laughs> I'll say this is the final well, you might get cut off so you better talk quickly <laughs> you have like 45 seconds left of magical <laughs> communication <laughs> okay uh, probably like I don't know two three hours maybe okay thanks Um, I've got a few hours so you can go ahead and show me whatever you're excited about like i said some goggles that help me see in the dark would be really awesome but i am also excited for other awesome things and you see this huge grin going across ziva's face um and she kind of like is squeezing like the end of her braid like excitedly um, as she takes you over towards the stairwell and she says okay if you want to start with goggles of night we can handle that no problem um yeah let's let's actually since you have time see i could just take you into one of these other training rooms they're very simple you know tables chairs uh things set up and we could just turn the lights out and see how it works but that doesn't sound like fun at all now does it mm -mm. No, nope. exactly. I'm here for the exciting stuff. Perfect. Have you considered any of this before? Have you ever seen a place like this before? I haven't. Um, I kind of grew up in a bit of a bubble. Um, both my parents are fighters with two weapons or a great sword. And um, my father didn't really teach me much about magic or any sort of magical items um i was always kind of raised to just trust in what you can see and feel and what you can do but i'm discovering that magic can come in very handy in a tight spot um so but this is all new to me i've never thought about it heard about it this is all perfect. kind of my first experience perfect that means you are ripe for the picking Let's see what we can do for you. And I promise this is not all magic. Not all of it's magic. We just like to, what we do is kind of combine the physical tangible and then also the, I don't know how you might phrase it. I, I suppose like a wizard might say like the weaving of the universe or something like that. Who cares? Come on. And so she <laughs> pulls you towards the steps uh, and takes you down. You go down a fair bit, um, you kind of feel the change in the air almost. Like it starts to feel a little bit more humid. Not so much so that you feel like you're walking through a swamp or anything, but it's like walking into a basement level. Um, and there, this one is more uh, compact. There's just the four doors. Um, no, there's just two doors, one on either side of another hallway. And it is dimmer down here but it is still lit and she starts walking with you down this hallway uh you actually see standing or sitting beside one of the rooms you see a couple of people sitting there already um one is actually the gnomish girl you had seen earlier today um in the novice offices uh you see her 
she's uh, sitting against the wall. She seems to be fiddling with something in her hands. Sitting next to her is someone you have not met yet. Uh, it is a young man. He's got fair skin, very bright blonde hair. Um, and his he actually has a set of small protective goggles that are pulled up over his head while he is also fiddling with some kind of um, it looks almost like a piece of wood that he seems to be kind of almost whittling down and across from them you see another familiar face although for a moment you're not quite sure it's who you think it is you do see the flush of bright pink hair but it is pulled back in this messy ponytail. She's wearing this very basic brown dress with short sleeves. Um, her hair kind of looks like it's fraying and, and like unkept, unbrushed. And the closer you get, you kind of see these specks of like some smudges of dirt on her face. She's not wearing any gloves or anything and she has this kind of ratty uh, rag on a on a loop around her belt sitting uh, she's sitting along the opposite wall from the other two and as Ziva is approaching the door she actually calls out to the others and she says oh hey Winna uh, Gary actually it's good timing you're here we have Viola here who uh, is we're going to introduce her to some of the fun gear that we've got in here. She's got a couple of hours to kill. Uh, actually, Cynthia, if you wanted to join too, since you're on your, are you on your break now? And Cynthia turns her head and sees you. And her face goes entirely red. And you can see her <laughs> tense up as she just slowly turns back and she's looking now like straight at the opposite wall uh, instead of looking at you. Um, Winna, the gnomish girl, looks at Ziva and you know she's waving and she kind of gives you a little wave as well, Viola, um, but she politely declines. Uh, Gary, the boy sitting next to her, he almost doesn't seem to hear her as he just keeps whittling. He looks up and he also shakes his head and then he looks at you and, and waves as well. Viola will just... wave back and, and she'll say hello to Winna and she'll say hello to the Cynthia as well. <laughs> just like her teeth are gritted as you are so kind to her. Um, and she looks back and she kind of like makes her way over to Winna and they start this hushed conversation um, that seems to be like just back and forth, back and forth quickly. Uh, did you want to try and hear what they were saying? Of course I do. <laughs> Please roll me a perception mm. check. That's a nat 20 for a 24. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Cynthia maybe is just hoping to just cut you out entirely and hope you're not paying attention. She, like, scrambles over to Winna and she's like, what do you mean you're not going in? And she, when I was like, I, I can come back any time, girl. I don't need to go in now. I know what they're doing. No, you don't understand. I really want to go in there. I really want to try this stuff. I never get to do that. When I was, says, you're here all the time. Like, you're working. You know Ziva loves you. You can go in whenever you want. She's like, I'm always working or I'm studying. There's no in-between here. It, I, don't make me go in there with her by myself. Um... But uh, Winna just pats her on the shoulder and she's like, You'll be good. Relax. Just go. I'll be right here waiting. And Cynthia finally um, stands and kind of brushes herself off and stands tall. Does not make any kind of eye contact with you whatsoever, Viola. As she approaches Ziva and says, um, That'd be... Great. I really appreciate that. Yeah. What are we, uh, what are you guys trying today? Ziva, um, <laughs> motions for one of the others, uh, one of her friends to, uh, quickly go 
back upstairs as I realized we didn't grab the things. And they go back up in just a minute, they come right back down and they are holding um, two boxes that when open, there are two small pairs of goggles inside. They kind of have this, uh, the nose guard piece kind of has this like almost beakish look to it. Um, the lenses and the frame around the lenses kind of reach out like feathers, like metal feathers. Um, and she offers one to you, Viola, and one to Cynthia. Cynthia makes a great show of seeming to know exactly what to do as if it were complicated to put a pair of goggles on, but she like fits them very properly on her face. Um, do you take yours? Mm -hmm. Cynthia, those look wonderful on you. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen you <laughs> out of like all of your purple and pink and, and flowers and all that. I kind of like this look on you. And then Viola will mimic what she's done and put her goggles on as well. Gonna see. <laughs> We're gonna. Ooh, my die got stuck. Okay. Um, Cynthia does slowly turn to you, and it's now her. She she has a nice like she has a, a nice appearance. Um. But now also these like owl looking goggles on her face. <laughs> uh, she just slowly nods to you. Thank you. You're and welcome. then looks back at Ziva. Um, Ziva explains. Uh, so these are goggles of night. So what they do is when you are in complete darkness, you'll still be able to see to a certain length as if you could see normally in the dark and the way you see in the light. So what we'll do is give you an opportunity to kind of, instead of just standing in a room, we'll give you an environment to stand in. Uh, kind of feel your way through, just natural, just act natural. Just move like you would move normally. Maybe if you want to swing your sword around a little bit, something like that. Um, yeah, whenever you're ready, you can go on inside. And she opens this metal door and motions you in. And it, you have the goggles on already? Mm hmm Okay. Um, she motions for you to go inside and it's um you didn't expect necessarily to be able to just see in darkness and for a moment you kind of wonder if she even has the lights out in this room so to speak because you can see very plainly um kind of as if you were you know just walking in the daylight this might be a little more dim but you can still see. And what you see is this forested, this kind of contained forested area. Uh, the ground beneath your feet uh, kind of crunches a little bit as you're stepping on blades of grass. Um, you see a few trees scattered around and you can see to the end, if I recall correctly, you can see to the end of the, um, of the room. So on the other side of the room is this wall that kind of it very much looks like it's painted to look like more forest but it's very obviously painted um so she motions for you to head inside and you hear cynthia coming in behind you as well and then you hear the door close behind you uh she peeks it open one more time she says natural movements try it out and then she shuts the door viola will like first thing she's gonna do is like pop off the glasses to see if it like actually looks dark when she's not looking through them mm -hmm. and then she'll pop them back on and th then she's gonna say um uh, cynthia do you know how they have like a forest underground it's obviously fake or oh. maybe they grew it <laughs> with magic or something i don't know if you know anything at all about magic it's very useful yeah i don't know if you heard me earlier talking to um ziva am i saying that correctly that's her name okay sorry i'm i'm not very good with names sometimes i can be a bit of an airhead um but i don't know if you heard me talking <laughs> to her earlier um oh i'm sorry i didn't realize i told a joke um but uh 
I didn't really grow up with magic. So this is kind of coming to the guardianship a little bit before. Uh, this is kind of the first time for me experiencing it. And it's it's honestly really cool. I'm I'm pretty shocked. Like when we had the vines trial, I mean, that was so cool. That guy, I think it was Vaughn just like snapped his fingers and like vines appeared out of nowhere. That's never something I've seen in my life. Uh, but clearly this isn't new to you. So you're, you grew up with magic. You've known magic stuff all your life. I mean, I learned it eventually. I'm the only one in my family who really can do it. Oh, that's cool. How does that work? Do you know like why your other family members can't do it? Or maybe they choose not to. I don't know. Roll me a persuasion check. Also, Cassie, if you want to see what they look like, I put an image of it in roll 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, 11 for the persuasion. Okay. <laughs> After the minus two of the charisma? <laughs> well, I gave myself uh, proficiency in persuasion, so it's just zero. Ah. <laughs> oh, perfect. perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. She, Heck yeah. <laughs> that was very um, she hmm. kind of looks you up and down, uh, for a moment, and she says, um, because I was the only one who cared enough to learn it. It's very easy to learn. Um, in fact, uh, we should make sure that these goggles are really working well, right? That's why we're here, to give them a try, right? I mean, yeah, we just kind of look through them and that means that they're working. Right. But are <laughs> they really, really working? See, trust me, like you said, I know magic and you don't really know magic, but you can learn. So let's, let's see if it's really going to work. Sometimes these things get a little temperamental. Um, and she walks out ahead of you a little bit. Um, not too, too far, but she walks a little bit ahead of you. Um, and you can see her through the goggles. You can see her kind of moving her hands a bit, and she says, um, so can you see this? She's moving her hands. Yeah, I can see you moving your hands. Viola will get out her sword and start swinging around. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can, actually. Um, Okay. Well, since you've already got your sword out, how about you make sure that you can see <laughs> if you're ever swinging your sword? Um, can I do an insight check on her if she's trying to do something? <laughs> sure. Go ahead, roll your insight. Y'all are about to duel. <laughs> <laughs> to the death! 14? Okay. Um, give me one moment. Keeping my notes all in check and junk. Um, you you get the sense that she's uh, she's definitely kind of like toying with you a little bit, which it doesn't come to any kind of surprise. <laughs> um, but she's definitely not just asking random questions for sure. Viola's gonna go ahead and pull out her other sword as well, so that she has one in each hand. Okay, perfect. Um. To which case, uh, she says, she she says that herself. She's like, excellent, that's perfect. So you you can see well enough to pull your swords out. Um, can you see this then? Uh, and she moves her hands again. <laughs> and I need you, please, to make a wisdom saving throw. Eleven. Okay. Um, you see her move her hands. One hand kind of moves in front. And then you see her kind of make a fist. And as you're moving your swords about, um, you immediately cannot. You find yourself stuck in place. Um, entirely unable to move. I think someone um, just cast hold person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
<laughs> and the mm-hmm. moment that you find yourself stopped, Cynthia starts walking towards you. And sh- <laughs> I'm let me see here. Again. I, I looked this up. I know the rules. Um paralyzed. So you are considered paralyzed. Um Cynthia walks up to you immediately and swift movements and very easily she's able to remove one of those swords from your hand. And it is you 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 do get a little bit of a <laughs> about it because it's weightier than I think than maybe she expected and she kind of like fumbles it a little bit. <laughs> um but she takes the sword and she uh, kind of tosses it behind her. And then she takes your other sword. And this one she keeps in her hand and she steps back. And this, all this time, her hand is still in the motion um, that she had made when she cast this, she appears to have cast the spell on you. Um, and she says, um, so there's your first lesson that maybe you should get a little more familiar with magic and maybe instead of walking around with your big bright beautiful golden armor and your big great swords that aren't doing you any good anymore maybe you shouldn't be on such a high horse and she steps back towards um you can also see in the center of the room um is this kind of cut out in the ground. It looks like a, a prepared, like a pit. Um, it's like a, it's not a complete straight line. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll show you in roll 20 what this room looks like because I can do that. <laughs> Let's drag you guys over to. Just to, for for you, she mm-hmm. does, Viola also has a rapier in her belt and a dagger. I don't know if she would have seen the dagger, but she would have seen the rapier if she was taking everything. She just took what was in your hands, those two swords. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so one sword she threw. So are you over in, um, are you able to see roll 20 now? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So you can see where you're standing up near the front. You can see where she is over by this pit. Um, and she has one sword on the ground right by the edge, the other one she's holding. And she says, uh, you know what else magic can do that you just strutting around can't do? She takes the sword that she's holding, and this one she just drops into this pit. And you see her kind of eye you for a moment as she holds her hand out uh, over the pit as well. And she starts to make another... She seems to start to make another motion with your hand. Give me another wisdom saving throw. That's a nat 20. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. I knew I chose to use the Viola dice for a reason. Yes, Give her the yes. job kick. It's a 22. <laughs> um, Healing 22. Just as she's starting to hold her hand out over the pit <laughs> where she had dropped that that second sword, you feel yourself starting to be able to move again. Um, but she is holding her hand, and it you you don't know what magic can do. She's holding her hand over the pit where she had dropped that sword. Oh, look, you can move again. Viola's gonna grab her dagger and her rapier. Okay. And move towards Cynthia and try to swing at her with her rapier. Okay. (laughs) Um, Because you said she dropped one of Viola's swords into the pit, correct? Correct. Okay. One of them is in the pit. Um... Get her. Get her. Get her. <laughs> there is a shot. She's not action. swinging like at her face or like and any vital organs or anything like that, like an arm or a leg or something like that. You're calling a non-lethal, <laughs> a non-lethal hit. Yeah. Okay. Followed by um, a lethal shove. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead and roll your attack. Uh, 15. Uh, a 15 will hit. Oh, someone didn't bring shield. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, wait. Never mind. I didn't right. say that. No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Hold on. Much, I'm sorry. <laughs> how much does mage hand add? I mean, not mage hand. A mage armor add? Well, mage armor adds 13 plus whatever her dexterity plus is. Six. And then if she has shield, that's a reaction thing. So that's the thing that I was referencing. And that just adds five to your AC. Okay, and what did you roll, Viola? She got 15. 15. Okay, so that just hits even with her, her mage armor, which was the first thing she cast while she was just fancifully mm. around with her hands. Nothing happening here. She was casting gotcha. mage armor. Um, yep, yeah, but 15 will hit. Uh, so for damage is going to be 11. Golly. My gosh. <laughs> so you describe how you're non-lethally hitting her with this rapier. She's just going to charge forward and just take a slash at her thigh. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you do that and you can see like the dress kind of tear uh, as she's um, trying to like get out of the way as you come charging at her. And she kind of rolls and she kind of turns in the direction of where the other sword is and um, makes an attempt to kick that down into the pit as well. Um, um, let's go ahead and just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and properly roll some initiative. And see if she has time to do that beforehand. I got a oh, dirty 20. Found. I don't have oh, her connected I guess to I can. It's okay. I mean, there's only two uh, okay. of them, so. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, no. Um, so she seems surprised, perhaps, by your sudden lunging and your fantastic um, prowess with a sword. Uh, so you do have the first initiative in this proper round. As she's, she's about to attempt to kick the other sword down. Viola's going to try to grapple her. Like, because she said she fell over, right? Or no? She didn't, she's not prone, no. She okay, was just well then, trying to get out of the way. But you're essentially... Viola right is going to try to knock her to the ground and, like, get on in top of her. and Not in the pit. <laughs> Why not the pit? <laughs> Why not the pit? <laughs> it doesn't look that deep from here. It is uh, a little deep. Viola's going to try to grapple her and just, like... Well, let's see if she can grapple her first. Mm -hmm. What do I need to roll for that? Thanks. It's going to be opposed strength rolls. Of which I can't roll on. Uh, 19. I feel like unless she gets a nat 20, you got her. Yeah, <laughs> that's only a, that's only a seven plus her strength, which is not going to be a 19. <laughs> All right, so you you want to tackle <laughs> and grapple? Her? Yeah, uh, Viola's gonna tackle her, pin her down. She's got her dagger in her left hand, and she's going to hold it up towards Cynthia's throat, but not fully <laughs> at her throat, just lower down. And in a very <laughs> serious tone of voice, Viola's gonna say, "Cynthia, I do not want to fight you." I do not know what the issue is, but those swords are the last thing I have of my mother. And I would like them back. But I will hit you again if I need to. And she is struggling in this, in your grasp. Um, she's going to try and break free. So is that just another strength check? It's going to be another opposed strength check, correct. 17. Nope, she's not able to break free. Um, as she struggles in your grip and um, she just 
glares at you. Um, but she doesn't respond, and she she stops. She stops struggling. She, but she stops. She just doesn't look at you, and it, she doesn't respond. She just doesn't look at you. Is there a way for like how deep is the pit? Is it easy for me to get down there and get my sword? It looks like it's about fifteen feet deep. And I don't see a way, like any steps or a ladder down into it. No, it looks like it's. Uh, it looks like it was made very purposefully, but there's no actual entrance. You just have to go in. Uh, give me um. From your words, give me a persuasion. I should ask for a persuasion check. Uh, fifteen. Um, she's not looking at you, uh, and she doesn't say anything, but you can see there's some kind of internal struggle on her face that she is not willing to verbalize. Um, and all she says, since she can't actually move herself, is just, get off, or I can't get it. Viola, before she gets off, she'll pull the dagger away, but before she gets off, she's going to say, Cynthia, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to get off, and I'm going to put my swords away. I'm asking you as kindly as I can right now, please don't break this little bit of trust I'm giving you and get my sword back. And Viola will get up and put her rapier, sheath her rapier, put the dagger in her belt, and pick up the other sword, short sword that's on the ground. Okay. Um, and she just slowly sits up, and she absolutely refuses to make eye contact with you. But she does, um, you see her reach her hand over the pit, and you watch her hand kind of motion again in ways you don't quite understand. But you can imagine magic is being cast again as this kind of spectral hand sort of separates from her own hand and goes down into the pit. And then a moment later, you see it come up first with one sword that it lays on the ground, goes back in, lifts the other sword. And maybe this one is a little bit higher up off the ground before it the hand disappears and the sword just kind of flops to the ground. Um, Viola and- will... Bend, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Viola will bend and pick up the other one. Um, and she's going to look at Cynthia's eyes, whether she's looking back at her or not. I just realized all this serious conversation is happening with the owl thing on her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make a great scene in the movie one day, guys. <laughs> okay. But Viola will pick up her other short sword, put it in the sheath, and she's going to look at Cynthia in the eyes, whether she's returning the eye contact or not, and just say, thank you. You're great at what you do, and I can't do that, and I'm very impressed the way you were able to pick that up with that little magic hand, whatever you call it, and whatever you did to make it so that I couldn't move very impressive you're great at what you do and viola will like pause for a second to see if she's gonna say anything right away she is staring at the door and all she says is um it was a mage hand and i cast hold person it's easy some people she stands up brushing herself off and she says you know some people aren't so fortunate to just have mothers they want to remember she starts marching towards the door Viola probably lets a little tear slide down her cheek don't feel sympathy for this and then wipes it away (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
And then she'll follow her out the door. Okay. Um, Cynthia is... Um, so, so, the door, um, for precaution purposes, the door is not able to open so easily from this side. Um, <laughs> so she stops at the door and has to, like, bang on it. And very shortly after, um, Ziva opens the door. Well, someone opens the door. It's not Ziva. It's one of her friends. Um, and Cynthia doesn't say a word. She just storms out. Um, when uh, looks at where Cynthia is headed, looks back at you, kind of gives a moment of a questioning look, but doesn't stay long enough for the answer and just runs after Cynthia. And Gary is still not looking at anything. He's just dealing with his piece of wood and whatever carving tool he's got in his hand. Um, Ziva does come down the steps again as she had left and came back um, after Cynthia had run up. Sees you exiting. And she is now wearing something different. She had changed uh, as if it were the end of her shift, maybe. Uh, she is now wearing also just a very plain blouse and trousers um she's got these uh these little normal looking spectacles on her face <laughs> very normal looking um and now you can see she's kind of got you know off the clock she's got this little bracelet on with this cute little this little teeny metal charm on it um, and just looks very that's like the, the the most adornment she's got going on otherwise very very plain and she looks back up at looks over at you what the heck I mean there's some sort of animosity there don't tell me how it's come about we just don't always get along um, but she picked the wrong button to push and so I may have given her a little slice on the leg, but clearly I didn't take her head off so everything's fine. Yeah, if you took her head off, it'd be a little Uh. difficult to uh, finish the experiment I suppose. Yeah. But the goggles were great. They're wonderful. (laughs) I wish I had a pair. Well, um, can't have these. But... Hey, uh, honestly, look, Cynthia's not that bad. She just has a tip on her shoulder. Long story, I'm sure she can explain. But, uh, um, honestly, someone probably needs to put her in her place every now and then. Just, uh, but good for you! Uh, since you did that, probably did her a favor, even if she won't admit it. Uh, look, if you want to borrow them sometime, just find me, ask, or ask Gary. I think he, he's a novice like you are. you probably find him sooner. Um, just tell him. Probably fetch him for you, too. Find one of us. We'll see if we can hook you up. Okay, that sounds wonderful. I will most definitely do that. Thank you so much for that experience. It was actually pretty gratifying in a few different ways. Um, I guess if there's <laughs> anything else you want me to test, I am a willing participant. Well, if you've still got time, okay. And uh, <laughs> so she will, uh, she'll spend the next hour or so with you, however long you anticipate before you go back to meet the others, and um, just bring you back into that room and test out a few other fun little nifty things. Um, you uh, you leave Kepner's command, having now experienced uh, goggles of night. Um, you got to try this these cool um, boots that first you didn't really want to put on because they did not at all go with your gorgeous armor, <laughs> but she assured you you would really like it, and um, when you put them on and you started to step, you found yourself stepping so quickly you almost hit one of the walls you moved so fast. Um, she called them um, boots of elven kind? I'm remembering the name correctly. Um, you moved very quickly. That's for stealth. Oh, just kidding. You know, the ones that make you move. Listen, I had to put notes together very quickly. Huh? 
Boots of Haste? Boots of Haste! That one. But you know what? Also Boots of Elvenkind. You found yourself super stealthy, which is unusual because <laughs> you get this beautiful armor, but it does not help with that at all. So you also got to try those. And you left Kepner's Command feeling really good about yourself uh, before you met the others um, at the end of the evening. So we will jump back <laughs> in time. Thank you for your, uh, thank you for allowing us that step back. Um, so after Bo leaves from uh, Maria and the tutoring, you guys had something else you want. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to do before the day was done? Since I think tomorrow was the plan day to talk to Aglin. At Sacred Keep. Do you mean before going to bed, or do you just mean, like, if there's anything mean? else, yeah, anything before bed. If there were other things you guys wanted to do, I didn't know exactly what the rest of the plan was for today. <laughs> I think collectively we didn't have a plan for the day, but I don't know. Uh, I think some of us had individual things we wanted to do. Yeah, now is the time. When we all go back, Snow is going to watch Stan to see if she actually goes into the barracks or if she is going to go leave again. <laughs> to sleep outside of the temple. <laughs> uh, Stan would actually look for a map. She's trying to figure out where the cemetery or graveyard this place is. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's at Saker's Keep. Surprise, surprise. What? Yeah. Crazy. There is a section of um, Saker's Keep behind it that is actually utilized um, for both. Uh, one side of it is utilized for gardening. They have herbs and um, some fruits and things like that. Uh, the other side is this long strip that is used as a cemetery, a memorial, a mausoleum type thing. That is where she would head instead of going back into the barracks. Okay. No follows her. So, going to Saker's Keep. So there is a path that doesn't, you don't necessarily have to go through the building itself um, to go around towards this garden and cemetery combination <laughs> in the back. Um... <laughs> But you do pass by a small, what appears to be like a training yard on your way through. You see, um, it is getting towards the evening, so it is much emptier. There's a couple of people who are out there uh, who seem to be maybe like doing some evening calisthenics. And then there's a couple of acolytes who are standing, just kind of watching for a little bit. One of them wanders inside at some point and one stays to observe. Um, but past them, you'd find this very long stretch of sort of a cobblestone road. Um, and you see the uh, you see the herb garden on one side and you see the cemetery and the grave plots on the other. What would you like to do? Uh, stay in well walk to the graveside. She gives the herb garden a bit of a glance and just shakes her head and looks for a place to sit down amongst the tombstones. She seems very comfortable doing this, like this isn't out of the ordinary. Excellent. Um, okay. She'll nod at Snow, who's following her. <laughs> Are you stealthing behind her? You're just following along? No, he's just he's just following. He's just curious to see where uh, where she's spending the night these days. <laughs> she still hasn't been so. back. There's this, this little pouch of sand waiting for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she hasn't seen it yet. So, sleeping in the graveyard is that the plan? It is. Very spooky. I like Not really. It. Do you know that there's this there's this creature made of living shadow that just feeds on you for a while until you just like waste away. Very dramatic. Very spooky. That, that does sound dramatic. But I doubt there's any of those around here. 
<laughs> ah, no, they're very rare. So why the graveyard? It's more peaceful. And... It's always been a safer place. Not many, many people of? wander into them. I'm not sure. Just always found that I can settle more easily. Surrounded by the dead than the living. And she'll pat the ground next to her. Do you want to sit? He'll drop his backpack on the ground and sit down next to her, crisscross. The first time I spent a night in a graveyard, I was a child, probably eight or nine. And it's been a habit ever since. You didn't have a house to sleep in, or did you just not prefer that? I didn't prefer it. That's fair. I didn't prefer my house either. So it was always more a house than a home. I think home is the people, not the place. So is Taryn home for you, then? He is. That's beautiful. I miss her a lot. When's the last time you saw her? Oh, um... Let's see. Guess it would have been... Just... Over a year ago, a year and a few months, I don't know, something like that. That's a long time. The days kind of blend together when you've been on the road a while, as I'm sure you know. Very true. But that's a long time to go without seeing, without seeing her, without being at home in any sense. Well, there's always letters, and he <laughs> reaches into his backpack and uh, pulls out an enormous stack of letters that are uh, tied together with twine. <laughs> oh my. We write a bit. <laughs> and you keep every one. Of course. That's beautiful. I don't like... I don't really like... Um, throwing things out, because the memory, you know, connected to each thing. And you don't As you want might to. have noticed from the weight of my backpack. It was... It's a heavy bag. And I suspect its weight is as much uh, a mental weight you carry with it as it is the physical weight on your shoulders very poetic way of saying it. Have you ever thought of being a bard? No. But there's lots of things I um, hadn't thought of until recently. Yeah, so you didn't know that you were an ASMR? That's wild. No, and I'm still not still not sure I believe it. I want to. What did you think you were? <laughs> I didn't know. But you must have when thought I was, about it. When I was a child, the town whispered about if I had turned feral. We knew it wasn't true, but that was the thought. Ah. Uh, thought of somehow maybe I'd taken to becoming an elf, like my father's parents might have been. Father's father would have been. Or just somehow different in another way. Cannot 
even imagine that. That's wild. I wish I just had to imagine it. Do you want to hear a story? Sure. So, once upon a time, there were two noble families, the Flintholmes and the Brookstones. And these families, while both alike in dignity, held for generations a deep grudge against each other, and they constantly plotted against the other, resorting to darker and darker means to overcome their opponents. And their conflict was known far and wide, with even the stars looking down from their heavenly dance with trepidation, as the monsters of the dark watched and crept around them, ready to devour the two families as they fought each other. Then, Atala, in her wisdom, sent from beyond the dawn the very first Aesimar, Josephus, or Joseph in common. Born to both elvish and human parents, and yet altogether otherworldly. His skin was pale, his eyes golden, and his hair darker than pitch. Strong he was, and when he spoke, everyone gazed up at him, flying in the sky like a feathered angel of old. He spoke to the Flint Homes and Brookstones, warning them of their peril. And when the dark monsters of the midnight hour became enraged at the peace being brokered, they attacked. And it was Josephus, the light spun, who helmed the defense and won great glory, saving both families with his valor. For none could withstand, it is said, his countenance in battle, his clearest bell and his shield was so bright that it mirrored the stars like a mountain pool. With the light spun's cry of vivere, or in common, to live, his enemies quailed and fled. When the true foes were defeated, Josephus turned to the two quarreling families and rebuked them, reminding them that ever the dark seeks to divide those who stand against it. The greatest weapons of the dark are deceit, division, and ignorance. Praising Josephus for his aid, the two families came together, and as a sign, lasting, lasting sign of forgiveness, married into each other, and thus did the two become one stronger family, and many, many generations later, along came a half-elf, with snow white hair and an excellent sense of style. The end. Is it? Is that your family history then? Could be. Doesn't really matter though. Is that why you call your and she'll point to the medallion. Is that why that's Joseph? It is a favorite uh, story of mine. I used to tell it a lot to Tara and she enjoyed it. Um, and we enjoyed acting it out in the woods behind our, our house. Um, so yes, it was it was just the first name that came to mind. <laughs> There's no other connection than that. It was just the first thing that popped into my head. But that's lovely. What's up? Oh, it's a story indeed. That's really quite beautiful. The power of the light will triumph. It always does. Which is why even in the night, nothing can dim the light of the stars. That's one reason I like to be outside at night, apart from it being habit. So long as the stars are still shining, there's hope in the world.
Is it that, or is it because you are hiding? That's what I thought. Yes, I do hide a lot. You call yourself the coward, I'm the one hiding from the world. Uh, I prefer running, you prefer hiding. It's all the same. Maybe we're all afraid of something. Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't think I want to be afraid of death anymore. You don't? You can see that he's shaking very slightly as he says this. She'll put a gentle hand on his shoulder. Death is... something in many ways inevitable. In many ways something we'll all have to experience at least once. I fear some people experience it more than that. But there can be a beauty found in it. A peace. A sense of knowing you've done what you were here to do. And so you can go forth and rest from that. Or you fought your fight as long as you could and now receive the embrace of peace. Sometimes it's much more tragic. Mankind makes it cruel. And yet, I don't think that's what it was meant to be, nor what it actually is when it happens. Why is it always about fighting, though? That's all we're good at. That's all we know to do most of the time, it seems. So much more, though, to do than that. <laughs> like singing and telling stories and keeping hope alive in a world that despairs. Just saying, I've seen a lot more smiles come about from these things than from fighting. Not to say some people don't enjoy it, but... I'd agree with you there. So is that Atala's view as well then? Fighting the good fight to earn one's death? I think so. It's what I've tried to discern, that that would be what she, what she views, what she says. But sometimes now, I wonder if I should question more of what she said or not said, and revealed or not revealed. I think there's a lot I was certain of that now I'm not as sure of. She reaches into her bag and takes out the pendant she had put there a while ago. It's like, I want to hold this again. But I think tonight I need a break from it. What do you think that will bring you? A break from it, I mean. Honestly? Just see if she notices. She can't do much worse than's happened in the last few yeah. nights, so... You know, you might be special, that doesn't mean you're your goddess's favourite. I don't think I'm anyone's favourite. Well, I wouldn't I say that, but it also doesn't really matter, because...
Forgive me, but um, it's a little bit petty of you. It is. Don't you think? And this, I'm not trying to be, uh, not trying to attack you in this at all. You're not the only one, the holy symbol in the pack. But he'll, uh, he'll reach into his bag and he'll pull out uh, a medallion, uh, an amulet that has um, the symbol of a warhammer on it. That's... I was never a cleric, but I do know what it's like to dedicate, or at least attempt to dedicate one's life to a deity's set of ideals and for it to not come to anywhere. And so, from that experience, I can say I really don't think that's your path. I think when you're unsure of yourself and where you are and what you're doing, that's the time that you hold on to what you do know and what you are certain of. And I think, I think you do know this. Can't just let me be petty for once, can you? <laughs> No, where's the fun in that? One day I want to know more about you and Duel, dear. That is not much to know. I was an acolyte for a few years. That's it. A few years? That's not an insignificant period of time. I mean, seven years specifically, but... Seven years? And how old are you? Uh, let's see, what day is it? Um, I'm, I'm about to be 30 tomorrow. However old you are, seven years is a long time. It's longer than I spent in a temple at once. Honestly, it got pretty dreary. I imagine you got quite bored. But, so boring. Gosh. But uh, you and I are not alike in temperament, so I think I, I, I think you would be just fine. Indeed. Hold on to what you know. You win this night, and she'll take off her glove and start wrapping her amulet back around her hand. <laughs> You're wise. Now I just like being right, it's all. I think it's a very normal thing to like to be right. <laughs> Thank you. You might be the first person to ever say that I'm normal. I don't think it's a bad thing to be normal in some ways. But if your whole life is defined by your normalcy, you're missing the point. You're also missing the fun. We can't do that. He'll lean back using his backpack as uh, a pillow and just start playing a little tune on his pan flute. Uh, not very loudly and not very upbeat, but just nice.
Are you staying out here tonight then too? He stops playing. Well, no one deserves to be alone. People spend too much of their lives alone already. Thank you. And Stan will lay back, taking out her bedroll and setting up a setting up to sleep. Is Snow going to be joining her? Does he have his bedroll prepared? <laughs> well he just bought one, so he would have it on his hand. It's true, yes, I do. No, yeah, after he takes off the tag. He'll, he'll finish <laughs> <laughs> Rip off. Just hear a bunch of plastic <laughs> ripping. He ain't no There's a tag on the edge of the bed that's like do not remove. <laughs> A chaotic good rip. Immediately rips it off. I don't like how it, I don't like how it tickles my neck. <laughs> he would. That would. He would absolutely. Hane's gonna be invented when they have the tagless tags. <laughs> yeah, he'll he'll play his pan flute for for a little while while uh, Stan is uh, setting up her own bed roll. Um, once it looks like she's done, he'll put it away and um he'll get out his own bedroll set it up and um pull out um pull out some a pack of letters from his bag um and just start rereading some of them um Stan, are you paying attention to him as he does this at all or are you yeah she's watching she's like, curious okay um, I'm, going briefly, you... I'm going to briefly interrupt. Um, Stan, when you are, uh, your bedroll and such, that's all in your pack. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, can you please give me a perception check? Yes. Oh, oh boy. That is a 25. Golly. Um, yeah, you're going through your pack and you're getting ready for bed and something just pings in your mind like something's not here. Something you had just received oh. today. <laughs> <laughs> just happened to notice it's not there. Whoops. <laughs> That's weird. Must have... She'll look around. So you haven't seen that handbook, have you? <laughs> what handbook? The... The novice handbook? I thought you I put it... handbook? It... It... That's incredibly I got... dull. What would we want that for? <laughs> it was in my mailbox this morning. I had it flipped through a few pages, and then we had to deal with things. I thought I'd put it... I bet they have replacement copies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could ask at the barracks. Snow makes a mental note to destroy all copies. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> I'm surprised her first thought wasn't just like, but I was I was with Bo when I checked the mailbox. Right <laughs> Maybe Bo or Viola knows where it went. It could have fallen out when we were walking around. We have had a oh, busy day. Morning. Very busy day. Alright. Those letters you know, interesting. Uh, you notice that this is an entirely different pack of letters, and this one is even thicker than the last one. <laughs> so that's another pack of letters from Taryn. Um, no, this is from someone else. Hmm. 
you would estimate there to be around 50 letters in this pack. <laughs> That's a lot of letters. Who else? Who else do you write? Ah, uh, no one anymore. But we used to write often. Did something happen to them? I don't know. Mm. But they don't correspond with me anymore. I'm sorry. Seems like letters mean quite a lot to you, and that's got to be... got to be a challenge. Notice in the letter that he pulls out, um, you can probably see, because you have ridiculously high perception, uh, that is, uh, this one is clearly more worn than any of the others. Um, and inside, uh, you get a glimpse of a portrait of someone. What does the portrait look like? You see... It is a uh, female, looks to be elvish, um, has bright green eyes and brown hair. It's just a, uh, it's just a face portrait. So you don't get much more than that, other than you can see um, that she is wearing a, quite a bit of jewelry. I think she and Viola would get along. She seems to like the shiny things. <laughs> yes, she does. She has excellent taste. She must mean a great deal to you. Why do you say that? You carry her portraits, and it's porn. It's obviously something you probably look at often. And I can't imagine you'd do that uh, for someone unless you care about them. I mean, you don't know maybe we're sworn enemies. Nemeses. One day to meet on the field of battle and see whose will is stronger. I don't think that's how that is, but if that's what you want to say, I won't press. She was lovely. She was. Still is, I'm sure. Maybe one day you'll get to see her again. I don't think that's what she wants. <laughs> I see. I'm sorry. He folds up the portrait again. Um, but you see in the corner, uh, a name is written, Ivy. Apologize for prying, but thank you for shouting. I mean, I called you out for being petty just five minutes ago, so I mean, you're well within your rights. <clears throat> I 
Did the letters bring you joy still then? I don't know. No, no, I, I guess, I guess they don't. So why hold on to the memory? Oh, I don't know. Have you ever had a memory that doesn't that feels current? Yes. For her, Many. this is the past, but for me, this is still the present. I hope you find peace however it goes that one day it may be something that is able to just be a memory or maybe more forever Fate or life brings it, or doesn't. Fate's what you make of it. Is it? I like to think so. A unique position, but you are a unique one, so I suppose it fits. Thank you. I do my best. <clears throat> I'll let you get back to your reading. He, like, he wiped something away from his eye and puts the letters back in his pack. Just flies back and stares up at the stars. Sleep well, Snow. You too, Stan. yourselves comfortable and sleep among the stars in a graveyard. <laughs> I feel like this is a much more comfortable situation for stay in than it might potentially be for snow, but don't let me speak for your character, of course. Um, and with that, we are going to take... I had something. Oh, okay. I was going to say we could take a, a, just a, a quick break, but if you want to do something first... I mean, he plans to do something before going to bed. Okay. Um, let's take a quick five. Um, when we get back, we will, I think, wrap up the evening with Bo. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what awaits us in the morning. So uh, give us a few minutes. You also have a moment to uh, refresh your drinks, restroom, da 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 And we will be right back.
welcome back. Um, thank you for joining us. Appreciate you taking a little break with us and then coming back with us. It's important, that second half of that. Um, so, we have left... We left Stayin and Snow in a graveyard for a sleepover. Heck yeah. That's what you missed in half one, in the first half. So, uh, <laughs> go back and watch that. It's very interesting. And then... <laughs> Moving right along. Um, before the night is over, Bo, you had something you wanted to do as well? Yeah, so he was going to go out. So on the maps, is there like an area that's kind of like, I don't know, looks like it would have like the night activity or something like that? Or just like general, like somewhat traffic, but not a ton of traffic? Um, you could... There's, um... Also, is there anything about crime rates in any of the wards in the area <laughs> on any of these bulletins everywhere? Give me an investigation <laughs> check. <laughs> if it's a nat 20, you might even find another poster. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be that. Dang. Uh, it's going to be a morning. 13. Okay. You don't see anything that's listing statistics like that, um, or even from the notices that are up on any of the boards. It's not very clear. Well, um, mainly however, it was like if there's other wanted things. Oh yeah, no, you're not you're not spotting any of those. However, um, you you can kind of discern just you you didn't spend a ton of time in cities, but of the ones you did, you can kind of discern um, there are some areas that you might imagine. You know, there might be some nightlife just based on vendors that might be in the area. Um, even if there are like late night residential people air, uh, up and about, there's residence wards. And then like heading for a little further south, there are some areas that might have some activity. Um, potentially. They're looking for s seedy corners. <laughs> yeah. So go to, uh, I guess, one of those. Okay. Uh, so you're heading kind of back in the southward direction? If that's where they are, yeah. Sure. Uh, this is what the DM is saying now, and it's absolutely being recorded, and then she's going to look at her map later and be like, Welp! About that! <laughs> that's okay. I'll just change the map. <laughs> so, uh, what are you looking for in this area? Um, so how many people are about, like, going to and from... And is there, like, outside vendors, or is everything basic, like, indoors? It's mainly brick-and-mortar stores. There's alleys, you know, people... What what time is it at this point? Um, so this is basically immediately after you've left? No, this is before going to bed. Okay. So you left Stormwatch Tower. You left the library. I don't know how much time you spent between uh, between then and now. It would have been like around dinner by the time you left Maria. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was figuring like bed is probably okay, sometime so between 10 and noon, oh, and midnight. So it'd been sure. like maybe nine. Yeah, so stores are, yeah, stores <laughs> are closed. Um, st stores are closed at, at this point. It's like, I think All it's, of I'm them? pretty sure. What kind of nightlife is this? <laughs> at nine o'clock? <laughs> it's not... This is not New York City. <laughs> I mean, York there's City. plenty of places that aren't New York City that are open past it's... nine. <laughs> you said between ten and midnight. No, I said he but was planning on going to bed between ten and midnight. Oh, I thought you meant you were looking. No, you were trying to gauge the time, and I was saying that it was before oh. he was planning on going to bed. Okay, I'm sorry. There was a misunderstanding. We are now communicating. <laughs> um. So, I'm sorry, then repeat your question for me. You were looking for, like, how many people are out and about? There's that, and, like, is there any, like, outdoor vendors? Like, what what does it, I guess, okay. look like? So, it is mainly, here, it is mainly just the brick-and-mortar um, buildings. So, it's all mainly indoors. Um, there are, ooh, I'm so sorry. Give me just one moment, please. Okay. I also just oh. realized that I never put on my crown until just now. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel any better. I realized about 30 minutes in that I never hit record. 
This entire area on my side has been one. Oh, no. <laughs> People have been freezing in place. Cameras, like, it's happening right now. Everyone's frozen. So. Oh, everything's freezing. What happened? Uh, no, I'm there just. We we're good. Yeah, we're, we're good. good. Are we okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. I'm yep. sorry. My landlord, my landlord was knocking on the door. I apologize. Um, I'm normally not in a position to answer. I hate to ignore them. Anyway, I'm sorry. So, for future David who gets to edit this, let's start here. <laughs> <laughs> so what you see is um, there's scattered about brick and mortar stores mainly. Uh, you might see a couple of carts. It's still not super duper active, but there's people milling about. Um, it's more... Things like uh, like game stores. There's like a art, there's an art vendor, um, little things like that. But um, yeah, it's it's some streets. There's alleys. There's people milling about. So he doesn't have like technically like if anyone paid close eye like expensive stuff, but he does have like trinkets that look like they could be expensive, but they aren't from his disguise kit. So he's just gonna okay. put on some things that make it look like he has something of value and not really anything. <laughs> and then he's just gonna continue to browse around. If there is like art stuff, he might go look over that. If he does find a chance though, he will buy a dice set. <laughs> if any of these gaming <laughs> things have just like a dice set. A plain old dice set? Like, well, so what he needs is- A not magical he dice needs, set, unlike what He needs has. like 12 <laughs> D6s. Essentially, is what he's okay. looking for. <laughs> so, if you bought two sets of six d sixes in a bundle, you'd have twelve d sixes. I'm sure you can no, find that. What? You're looking for? Oh yeah, twelve d six. Well, I mean, <laughs> most games, dice. most games come with just d sixes. They don't dice. come like with yeah. a whole array. Whoa. Wait, I, mean, I, I imagine you want to. Huh? Whoops. You want to buy? Dice. Yes. dice. Yes. Okay. We can. Yes, While that's also looking awesome. like this, and he's gonna be trying to see if anyone starts tailing him um, from this. Okay. So go ahead and roll me. Let's see. You're trying to look. You're trying to look expensive. Well, buying dice. Like <laughs> you want to look like me. <laughs> um, I will allow you. So please roll for me either a. Uh, charisma, it's charisma performance? I uh, I mean, um, I, I or could do... a deception. I'll it's one it. or the other? Yeah, either All performance right. or deception. Oh my gosh. Eleven. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not hard to kind of look the part of Either I'm very rich and I don't know what to do with all this money, or I have some money and I'm not careful with it. Um, it takes you probably a little longer than you'd hoped, but um, you might get the sense that there's some eyes on you. Like, you know, just if you weren't careful, something might come off of your 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 pouch, your hip. And as I go from place to place, are any of the one. eyes following me, I guess you can say? Like, is anybody trailing after him? Give me a perception. And also, if he did find the dice, I need to know how much it is. <laughs> I can find that for you. A dice set is a silver piece. Oh, two sweet. Two silver pieces for two, for two to complete the amount right, of dice. And his next dice roll is a ten. <laughs> it's a... Uh... <laughs> You're hopeful, you're just not totally sure, but you think maybe you might be able to... You think maybe some of those eyes are following you. But again, it's taking you longer than you'd hope, and you're kind of annoyed by it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a 10 on your perception roll? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, so as you're, as you're walking about, though, milling about, let's say shortly after you managed to get your hands on this dice set, um... You leave that shop. There's an alley uh, between this kind of game shop and then this like art 
building next to his art store next door. Um, as you were walking and you turn the corner, um, a sight kind of takes you by surprise. Um, you see... Actually, first go ahead and roll me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, my. Tell me it's a nat one. It's an eight. Yay, yay, yay! <laughs> oh, no. Gosh. <laughs> I'm moving okay. this dice to the side. <laughs> I was gonna say you need to have dice in jail. You are going straight to dice jail. What is your armor class? Fourteen. <laughs> Oof. Rip. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Give me a moment. Wait, was that a saving throw or is it just a regular? It. I called it a saving throw. Oh, then it's um, a uh, 10. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> In that case. Oh, yeah, I, I, for, I forgot you're out of psionic dice, too. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's why we were resting. <laughs> we weren't going to do anything more today. <laughs> Well, actually, did he have enough time for a short rest and all that downtime? Because he probably would have been down for like an hour while he ate dinner. Short rest. Okay, so he has one psionic dice because he gets <laughs> an ability back for short rests. He gets uh dice. Ah, oh, so close. Okay. Um yeah, so you come around this corner and it doesn't catch you, but you see a fist come swinging in front of you. Um as you see someone dressed in a uh, a brown cloak. Um take a swing at you and kind of try to shove you aside as you're coming up. Go ahead and um, roll initiative for me. I'm going to roll some initiative and I'm going to move us over. Actually, before you do that, because you need to be able to select your token. Oh, well, I, I just rolled it regularly and I finally got a good one. I got 19. <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. Let me, let me put us on the correct time to do it again. It's This is a and it didn't have to be like this. I mean, he wasn't trying to make it like this. <laughs> it didn't have to be like this. I don't even have your... Never mind. It's okay. It's time to duel. Uh, where are you, Bo? Oh, you're in your character. That's where you are. Bo, there you are. Why can I not select you? Oh, because you're on the wrong layer, that's why. I mean, I don't even Golly. see a change on my end, so I don't know exactly I know, I didn't. Uh, I wanted it set up before. <laughs> I wanted it set up correctly before I pulled you over there. And now we're on the correct Oh, yeah, and I did a... I used one of my hit die for that short rest, and I got all the one. So I got two health points back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. Let me make sure you've got control when you get over here. Okay, let's move you over. Boop. Can you see now? Uh, yes. So you are in this alleyway. Oh, you there's turn like the corner. Multiple? Hmm? Nothing, I didn't realize it was multiple. Yeah, so <laughs> you turn the corner Five. and there's this guy who just attempted to take a swing at you and he is wearing uh, this brown cloak. Um, you see an iron brooch attached to it. Um, you already rolled your initiative? Yeah, I got a 19. Okay. I'm going to have our buddy do the same. I'm literally not about to deal with uh, roll 20s initiative because I don't feel like it. Your girl just doesn't feel like it. So we've got. Oops, come back. There you are. Yep. Okay. That 
that was not great for number one. <laughs> and number two. Rolled literally the same thing. Most excellent. You said you got a 19? Yeah. Beautiful. So this guy just took a swing at you. Um, and in his other hand, he's got this, uh, this sword, a scimitar, if I remember correctly. And you have the first initiative uh, for this guy standing right So he missed you. me? He did miss you. All right. And the he third guy, what's, what's his deal? He, uh, he's standing further back around some boxes that are kind of piled up. Um, he seems to have just be turning... Oh, no, you didn't notice that. Your perception was poor. Um, he's looking at you. He also has... <laughs> he also has a sword, sword drawn, and he seems to be um, adjusting this. He's also wearing a brown cloak with a familiar iron uh, brooch on it. And you're talking about this guy? The other one in red. Oh, I was talking I know about there is, him. Actually, there is someone... Uh, yeah. I'm going to make that disappear for a moment. <laughs> you don't need to see that right now. You see nothing. Okay. <laughs> Rip. You see nothing at all. All right. Um, Bo is going to use steady aim to give himself advantage, and he's going to stab Get with out. a psychic blade that he conjures in his hand. Okay. So that is going to be... Oh, I wish I was Vale right now. I rolled a 19. <laughs> Could have been a crit. Oh, <laughs> Could have. Um, but that would be uh, a... Will hit. Okay, cool, because it adds up to 24. So this wow. is... 24 will definitely hit. <laughs> this is 4 plus 3. So that's going to be 7 plus... What? Is... How many dice is... Oh, okay. 7 plus 6. Psychic damage, Adam. Okay. 13 psychic damage. Uh, to the guy right in front of you? Yep. Excellent. Um, okay. And then it is his... Oh, if there was anything else you'd like to do. Oh, well, I was going to ask if he can, for like a free action, try to see if anyone's watching this fight. Or if anyone's um, around. I'll allow you a quick perception check. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I rolled the five. So it's a Ooh, seven. <laughs> you're in the... This guy is asking for bloodlust, and you are not ready to see if anyone else is around. <laughs> this guy's asking for trouble. <laughs> All right. Okay. So he is going to... Take a swing with that scimitar in his hand. Will it roll? What do you mean not found? Gosh dang it. Okay, we're just gonna have to trust me on this one. Um so he rolled a twenty-one to hit. <laughs> Good for him. I imagine a twenty-one hits. Yeah. Alright. Yes, bear. Just a little. Um, so that's going to be, uh, he brings the sword down. That's going to be three damage as he slices at you. Okay, well, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Guy's weak. <laughs> Almost like a thug or something. You can take him. And yet. Get him both. Yeah, but there's two of them. <laughs> that's true. As his buddy comes up to join take the fray. Take him off map one at a time. He's also going to attempt to slice at you. That's only an 11. Okay, that one misses. Okay. I weave out uh, away. <laughs> boy. Yeah, you manage to duck and weave out away from this guy um, who shouts to his buddy as he misses. He's like, dang it. Don't. No witnesses. Get rid of him. No witnesses. Your turn, <laughs> All right. He's going to do he the same thing. He didn't see anything. He didn't roll um, high enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. about. <laughs> Why are you attacking me? <laughs> Sounds like he's in like a Jackie Chan I movie. literally saw nothing. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be a dirty 20. <laughs> That's what you rolled? Yeah. Okay. 
you rolled? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I, I, he's sure. attacking. Get him. Oh, actually, it's a uh, 18. I thought for some reason that I had a plus seven, but I have a plus five. But I'm guessing a seven or oh, an 18 still hits. 18 will still hit. Yes. All right. Cool. So that's gonna be. Uh, is that's gonna be eight plus? Ooh, eight. 16 damage. Which one are you attacking? The same guy from Ooh. the first time. So this guy. Okay. Yes. And what were you attacking with? Uh, his psychic blade. So we learned how um, we learned how midnight beasts die when they get hit with psychic damage. How do people go down when they get hit with psychic damage? Oh, he's he's down, down. He's down. <laughs> um, blood starts coming down his eyes and his nose, and his ears, oh and then he just collapses on the ground. <laughs> And you watch him now with this bloodied face that you didn't even touch collapse to the ground. Um, you're watching it drip onto the, the brown cloak. Um, some little drips of it falling onto the iron brooch as well just to really hit home that this man is no more. Anything else you'd like to do? Oh, sorry, let me mark it. He's, he, he did. Is it... Is it not okay for him to keep seeing if other people are picking up on this per turn. <laughs> like if anyone's walking by, anyone's coming around. <laughs> uh, with the swiftness of his death, I will allow another perception check. Woo. All right, which which of these dice? <laughs> All right, okay, I think I could do this. Perception 16. 16, okay. Um, you, as the guy goes down, you now have line of sight of those crates further back here. Did you see okay. the ping? Um, yeah, further back here. Yes. Uh, you have line of sight back there, and you do see uh, there is, like, a leg propped up on this, uh, on, on one of the crates, as if someone were fallen back there. Uh, it's moving as if pained, but someone appears to be back there. Okay, somebody moving. There's someone back there, uh, but they look like they are on the ground. Like their leg is up there because they have they are prone. Okay. And then I mean that's his turn at that point. Okay. Um the other guy. Where am I? Where am I? That's what happens when I have multiple browsers open. Um Okay. The other guy. He sees his friend go down um he looks at you like you are the devil hmm. himself um <laughs> he's going to it is an action to disengage unless you're a rogue mechanically speaking correct yes unless you are a rogue yeah um he's going to he's going to book it he's what? going to run like heck but so wait so he disengaged how far can he run um suppose got our reach i believe that <laughs> he's going to attempt to run um uh, he can get uh he starts to, to dive around the uh that stack of crates as he starts right. to run so he only got that far well yeah because he only he has to use a full action to Step oh, away from for some reason, it seems like so in. insignificant, but I guess moving around that, that is about 30 feet. All right, so Bo's going to do... <laughs> That's um, <like> speedy boy. <laughs> he's going to do steady aim, and he's going to throw a dagger now. Because they got 60 Finish foot range. Him. Okay, are you going to That's move a nat some 20. so you're in line? Ah! Oh! <laughs> so I'm going to ask that you move some, just because. He has to, but what do you mean? He doesn't have to. He has 60 foot knife. No, I think he hid behind a crate. Line of sight. Line he's of behind, sight. Like there's there's stacked crates in this area, um, and he is now he's behind a stack of crates. So he has some oh. cover. Unless well, you want to do it, unless you want him to have the cover, you don't care. If he has Just the cover, I mean, he got an at twenty, so it would have hit him beyond uh, the cover anyway. Uh, yeah, it's probably gonna hit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nat twenty. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I was just gonna say double the damage it was. Is how it I'm works. Going to, yeah, so roll the damage and then double it. Alright, so it's gonna be six 
plus four, so that's gonna be ten, so it's twenty damage. Ooh, wow. Um, and this was with the psychic dagger? Yep. Yeah, you hear him scream as this thing manages to like jam into Gosh. his into his freaking neck, um, and then vanish, and he's just grabs his cl the cloak falls back. You see this head of the streak of dark hair. Um, and he is uh, feeling real bad as he doesn't go down, but he's hurting real bad. Okay. Is that your full turn? Uh, yeah, that's everything he could do there. Okay, he's going to attempt to get out. He's almost gone. <laughs> he's now around the he's corner. He's not dashing? Oh, yeah. Thanks. He didn't use his full action. He's gone. Well, when you say gone, <laughs> how far away did he go? I mean, like... Also, how tall is this building that he's right next to? It's rather tall. <laughs> is it more than 60 foot tall? Maybe not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Bo's going to... to yeah, Bo can dash for a bonus action. So he's going to one, two, I don't know, three, four, five, six, six. Wait a minute. So that's that's one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Does he see anybody when he gets over there? Uh, let me see. Uh, as he, so he's ducking into the alley, he ran, what is your, how far can you see? I have 60 foot dark red <laughs> vision. Oh, actually he can go further than that because he has 35, so he gets another two because he gets another 70. 10? Okay. Um, as he's, as this man is dashing out, um, give me a perception check real quick. Uh, See if he managed to slip it and get away. Because there's a lot of crates, there's debris, oh. um, there's things from the stores stacked uh, it's up. 21. These overhangs. 21. Mm -hmm. You just managed to see him uh, as he he's he's still in the straightaway trying to get away. And you see he's, he's going to try and turn down one of those other alleys. So he's going to use, so he uses bonus action and dash. He's going to now use his action to continue to dash. And he's going okay. to get another 35 feet to the direction Yikes. that I can't see. How close is he behind that guy now? <laughs> what was the full distance you ran? 35 additional feet. For 35 additional feet from where he is right now. Yeah, from where <laughs> Bo is right now. <laughs> You'd be able to catch up to him. All right, so Bo's You'd back on him. <laughs> right on top of him if you want, or distance if you want. All right, so Bo is like right next to him then. Okay. Uh, I'm not that's, gonna re -ring the map. that's all of his. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Okay. That's all of the actions that he can do, though. Are so, you, are you adjacent to him then? Do yeah. You go like you are with. Like if he range? if he keeps running without disengaging, he will have an opportunity. Okay, got attack. it, got it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's going to. Hey, Bo. Hi, hello. Uh, hello. Um, he turns around as you are right up on him, and, uh, he reaches his hands out. He's got his sword in one hand, you see panic, frenzy on his face, and he reaches a hand out to touch you. Um, uh, he doesn't actually need to do that, does he? He just reaches his hands out. And you... Where is he? You see his hands. Where's my notes? Is he doing jazz hands? He is. <laughs> it's uh some people have like the final like bear hug of death. He has jazz hands. Okay. Um I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. That's a nat 20. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You see... <laughs> you found the good dice. You see his hands uh, start to give off kind of a, a, a recognizable, like, arcane aura. Uh, and you feel it kind of start to come to you, and you manage to shake it off, whatever it might have been, uh, which just freaks him out even more. Um, <laughs> and he will uh, despite the opportunity attack he's going to try and run again okay he's going to take the opportunity attack go for it <laughs> ooh that one's going to miss uh, that's going to be an 8 <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah you, you swing thinking you've got it maybe a little too cocky or maybe this guy's a little more uh, slippery than we think um, as you your hand goes wide with the attack um but he is going to uh, move another. He starts running and he turns down another alley. Have we gotten He's farther away him. from people? You are. Yes. Now we're running through alleys. Yeah, I'm gonna. There is definitely. There's no one visibly in sight right now. It's just him, trying to duck and weave in alleys. Okay, so Bo on his turn gonna try something for the first time during this. He's gonna continue moving up to him and he's going to try fanged bite on him. Okay. <laughs> it's an attack. Yeah. Ooh, and it's gonna okay. miss. <laughs> oh, no. Um it's gonna be a ten. <laughs> uh a ten does not hit his armor class. <laughs> okay. Well he he made he made kind of like the lunge towards him and I guess missed a part of whatever skin is exposed on him. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe he was going for his neck or something like that, but missed. But his eyes are now Hulk red. Shot to the neck. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, you uh, you attempt to leap at him and he turns, um, is that your full turn? Movement and action? Oh, actually he has, oh wait, wait, so, well, so that's considered just a melee. It's not a finesse. And it's not considered light. I don't know why it doesn't have these features because it's literally on his person. But apparently it's not light when he bites people. So It's heavy? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Because with two weapon fighting, it's like you have to use two light weapons. But this isn't classified as light. It's just you bite. So I don't know. Because it's a different kind of movement. Yeah. With two weapon fighting, it's assumed that like... You, you can use your own momentum from swinging with one hand to swing with the other hand. Yeah, so if he was like a monk, I assume he could punch, but um, right. <laughs> that's all he could do for that one. Okay, um, this guy uh, turns. So that was your your turn after the opportunity attack, and the guy ran. That was Correct. his turn to and run. And now I'm adjacent to him again. Attacked with the bite. Okay, <laughs> um, but you're right up on him again. Yep. Okay, he's gonna. Sw he turns and he sees you, and he sees the sanguine red mm. in your eyes. Um, and ah. he's uh, also he's he's gonna just for fear of his life, he's going to swing. Um, this is now theater of the mind. We love it. <laughs> uh, it's only two people, so I it's pretty easy. This very well. <laughs> That's true. It's a little easier now. Um, that is going to be 18 to hit. It hits. Excellent. If only he hadn't swung, and if only he had decided to do the other thing. It's okay. Um, that's going to be... That's another three damage as he brings the sword across your body um, in this mild panic. Uh, but it seems to be all he can do is his arm is shaking, and he's like, What are you? <laughs> is he not he running? Uh, he's not going to try and disengage again. Oh, or he's perfect. not going to try and let you have the opportunity to attack again, no. <laughs> cool. But I was going to give him a smile, and then he is <laughs> going horrifying. to... <laughs> so creepy. I'm scared. He is going to, as he's doing that, he's grabbing his real dagger from his, behind him, and then he's going to do um the... The same thing that gives him advantage, because now he doesn't need to move, and he's going to swing at him with advantage using his dagger. Get it. And Get that's it. going to be a dirty 20. That's going to hit. All right, so that's a d4. So that's going to be four plus 
six, so that's ten damage. Yeah. How do you want to do this one, too? Slice right across the throat. <laughs> right across Ooh. the throat, and without too much gory detail, there is a, <laughs> a lovely puddle forming and, and growing um, as it is dripping and draining, essentially, down uh, his front, completely darkening the front of the cloak, completely covering the iron badge um, as he collapses to the ground. He's going to quickly go into his pack now and he's going to grab some vials and he's going to start filling them up because he was out of his pocket blood. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Give me a survival check. Pocket blood. Pocket blood. (laughs) No, pocket blood is much too precious. We don't throw the pocket Uh, blood. That's 11. No, I mean, it's... 11? How many yeah. vials are you trying to fill? I mean, he only has three. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll say that you are you are apt enough to be able to fill those three. And then he's going to also search him. Okay. Uh, give me an investigation check. Well, he knows somebody's bleeding out in the corner and he's, <laughs> he's got other things. You said you were invested, so that's a nine. <laughs> Cool. We're back. We're um, back. Oh, wait. Never mind. Actually, that missed. Never mind. <laughs> We're back to this. It wasn't an attack. It was just. No, I was thinking. No, I was thinking of the fanged bite because the fanged bite, I could get some bonuses from that. But. Um, oh, actually, wait. Okay. I have one psionic dice. I forgot that I got that back. You can use that 11. <laughs> do, do I have to. Survival is one of your proficiencies? Uh, yeah. No, I wasn't doing it for the survivor. I was doing it for the investigation. Investigation. I'm sorry. That's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. But, Eleven. So, yeah. Um, on this man's person, you find, um, well, first and foremost, it becomes very clear to you that he is wearing, uh, the brooch and cloak of someone from the Peace Watch. Um, the next thing that you find on him is a pair of, is a, not a pair, why did I write a pair? A set of um, some well-used playing cards, but there's not much else on him. Seems like a pretty standard dude. All right, he'll pocket the playing cards. <laughs> Excellent. He's getting all the game pieces. Um, he's also yep. going <laughs> to, uh, so he's going to, I guess, leave that. And he's going to come back over to the site that he was at, and he's going to investigate the other body, the one that he killed. Um, On that body, you also find... Oh, am I not rolling for that one? Um, This one's pretty obvious. Uh, you, you're good. Um, You find the... Oh, the that guy also had a throat. knife, though, that he attacked me with, too, right? The scimitar? They both had a... a so he's going to grab the scimitars, too, as he's going through. Go for it. The very yes, least he I'm can sorry. sell them. Yes, the weapons. The <laughs> weapons are easy to pick up for sure. Um, a brooch and the cloak of the Peace Watch. And you find um, a pair of leather gloves. They are very small. They look like, they, they don't seem like they might fit you. Um, they seem like they're either fit to a child or uh, just one of the races that are smaller than you are. So he's going to take the gloves, and he's also going to take the brooch of the Peace Watch, because you never know when that could be good for a disguise. And... Sure. <laughs> a cloak, too? Or just this, is how he, this is how his disguise kit is made. He just grabs things off of bodies, and he uses them. <laughs> there you go. Just the um, and then <laughs> now he's going to go over to the other person. At this point, he's like calmed down. His eyes have shifted back. And he's gonna go check on this guy over. Okay. And he, the other, the man had uh, stood since you had gone running off. And by the time you got back, finished checking the body, he is now, he's shaking his head and climbing over the, the crates. And you recognize him as the uh, watchman, Canyon, you had seen earlier. Um, he's looking kind of bruised up. And you actually also see there is um, his his blade, his weapon, uh, also has some blood on it as if he had used it to strike someone uh, maybe before they got the upper hand or something. Um, he's coming around. He's looking a little bit bruised up. 
Uh, he sees you. Oh. Not my finest hour. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, what God. was that about? These guys came around. I was doing patrol and they jumped me. Well, aren't you, aren't you guys like on the same side or whatever? Or am I misunderstanding no. it? No. Those guys, the guys had jumped me. They were trying to take my cloak. All right, so they must you've have taken those off of other watchmen. You've never seen them. I don't know those guys. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I guess are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'll be alright. Again, just not my finest hour. I'm probably gonna have to... Okay, this is gonna sound a little strange, but, uh... You don't happen to have, like, a way to cover up this, uh, this shiner. Hmm. Rather not have to have my lady see me like this. She freaks out. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can try to cover it up a little bit, but aren't you supposed to do something about the bodies here and there? Like, are you just Gonna leave them where they're at. Body, and he looks and he says, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's my job. That sure is. Now that I know, where's the other guy? Oh, he. Do I want to know ran, where the other guy is? He ran a bit down. All right, I'll have to go find him. Oh, and I'm gonna have to take something. <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and they didn't Ugh. say anything before because I heard that they didn't want to leave witnesses. That's the only thing they said around me. I was doing my normal patrol. Guys come up. I'm not thinking much of it except there's one person. There was three. There was one person. He didn't have anything on him. Uh, the other two walked up. I assumed they knew each other. And then it jumped me. Oh. They were trying to get my... They start yanking on my cloak, on my on my brooch. They're trying to get this thing off. I don't know what they want. I, I don't know why they would want it. Well, not gonna get I mean, just... they probably wanted it for the person that didn't look like them. You know, a trifecta, a set. As soon as this concussion heals, I'm sure I'll be able to make as much sense of it as you. All right. <sighs> I mean, I'm just confused why they didn't just steal it from the barracks. I assume that there's outfits there. They didn't need to attack somebody on foot um but you can just waltz into a you're not gonna just find that in our in the command i mean you're not just gonna let someone walk into the command offices and take our uniforms well that's I didn't, not gonna happen i didn't say they waltz in but maybe they aren't very stealthy <laughs> themselves they look like a couple of thugs to me yeah well maybe you should be more m mindful of thugs <laughs> moving about Clearly, I'm going to have to. I didn't think Rachi Mino was like that, but... I suppose sometimes you have to learn lessons the hard way, and I hate learning lessons the hard way. But here we are. And thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, uh, so let me see. And he's going to try to... He's going to grab from his disguise that something that can potentially... Like, he's, he's looking at his skin tone uh, and then trying to see if he has <laughs> anything that actually matches it. That, what... What tone is his skin? He has, uh, <laughs> he's a lot darker of skin than you are for sure. Um, he has, he has like brown skin. So both can be like, mm, I don't think That's I can so get it to match it, but and he's gonna <laughs> have his eye patch. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you can at least look tough for the lady. Eye patch. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure. I'll give it a shot. Well. I appreciate that. I'll get this back to you. All right. Um, well, that... Get this eye patch on. Well, that works. Sorry, I'm not much and... of a pirate myself. How's it look? Looks good? Just yes. Not quite fit it right. <laughs> Great. Look, as long as uh, I'm not spooking anybody. Yeah, on the upside, I mean, you can use it like how the pirates actually use it. So, like, you can, if there's a light adjustment, you can move the eye patch. So that way you could still see, because that's, because you still have a good eye back there. 
like that. <laughs> yeah. And he, he lifts it up and you see his like slowly swelling shut eye. <laughs> well, maybe at some point you might want to get much. you might want to get some ice. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm I, I, I'm gonna go to bed. Hmm. So enjoy your guard and yeah, like maybe. I don't know. I heard that you guys just bury them where they fall, so I don't know if you need to dig a pit what? here or something, but... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sure that your guidebook or something has something for these kind of events. So... Yeah. I'm gonna... I'm gonna head on out. Thanks. And if you need anything, honestly, I... I owe you one. So if you need something, yeah, let me know. Starts yeah, to... well, if you find anything else, Ugh. well, if you find anything on them, actually, um, just let me kind of know if you figure out any kind of motive, or find anything. Maybe I'll they, maybe they like out. swallowed their what they were supposed to be doing. So maybe if you <laughs> give them a little, open them up and see what's inside. Maybe you'll find directions as to what their job entailed. It's Bo, right? No, my name is Snow. <laughs> No. Right. Okay. Um, where do you, wow. where do they come from that they do these things? Where did I come from? Honestly, Eastrum. I didn't take them for the uh, gouge people open and see if someone's hiding something in there. That's. I mean, those like mines get crazy. Is what I all I can tell you. You know, it could be the mining side. I just, I know it from the farming side, but the mining side, maybe they, uh, they get a little wild over there. Mm. All right, I'm off to bed. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Snow. I don't know. And uh, you see him, as, as you're going, you see him heading towards the body and just looking like, oh, I can't believe I have to deal with this now. Oh, can't believe I have to deal with this now. All right, here we go. He hasn't Brace seen the worst of it yet. No, he has not. <laughs> And then you uh, head off to bed? Yep. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you head to bed. Um, I know Viola, you're making your way to your proper bed as well. Um, you don't see, uh, just as a note, you don't see Cynthia in the room uh, as you're heading to bed. Um, <laughs> I know, ruined your whole night. <laughs> <laughs> um. You wake up in the morning. So a long uh, rest? Yes, it is a long rest. You can have your psionic dice back. You can have your spells back. You can have all your tomfoolery back. I'm sorry, all the confidence for your tomfoolery back because the tomfoolery never went anywhere. <laughs> Let's go raid Sacred's Keep. <laughs> Let's get <No>. it. <laughs> um, you... All right. So you get up. Well... Two of them are already there. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are staying there <laughs> and just going straight into Saker's Keep from there, or if you had plans to meet up before you charge the place. Nose ready to go. Okay. <laughs> ready to go. Viola would have just woken up and, like, she doesn't really know what the plan is, so she just kind of went and sat out in the common area until she sees someone. <laughs> it sounds like she would have just seen <laughs> well, we'd Bo eventually. We discussed. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly how much of the discussion Viola was there for with a lot of it. I think she was there for that. She was probably would have known the plan was to go to Sacred Keep. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, you would because this was after we, we talked, talked about that before the, the library. Yeah, it oh, was on okay. the way there. It was Sacred Keep yeah. first, or were you trying to find? Um, were you still trying to catch uh, the? I think it was Sacred Keep first, and then emissary second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sakers first and then emissaries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, fantastic. Then uh Viola and Bo probably would find each other. Um Are there any um from like the area where we get free food, is there any like kind of like fruit or pastries out for like a grab and grow <laughs> breakfast? Absolutely. Continental you breakfast. Go to the, exactly. The continental <laughs> breakfast. Absolutely. Uh, you head. You head to the mess Thank hall, yeah. um, and you see there are some people. You, did you guys get up like like bright and early first thing? Y'all aren't sleeping in. This is well. It's like a, a business day. It's like eight hours for a long rest, right? So it'd probably be about yeah. between like you, you could be up. I don't like know, seven and eight. Dawn. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> um, perfect. Yeah, you're up. There's, there is, uh, there are definitely the smells of breakfast from the mess hall. Um, there are not a ton of people there just yet, but there are definitely the smells of breakfast. Um, when you go in, there are some, there are some things preset, uh, kind of like a continental breakfast. There are some, your morning oats and some fruits and some people who like honey and toast or whatever, jelly and toast. Is there like uh, a make your own waffle station or well, something? Well, that's what I was going to say. Bo's going to be like, Viola, I got to show you this. <laughs> <laughs> High or low, stay in. Let's go. <laughs> the waffle station is closed this morning. <laughs> is it broken? Waffle station. Darn, it's gonna be like the McDonald's ice cream machines, isn't it? Yeah, it's it it, it could be busted for a while. This is always broken. Yeah, there's just a. There's little, oh, I had it mapped out on how it would work too, in my head. There's That's what I was iron. thinking the entire time. <laughs> iron plate with these divots <laughs> in it uh, but there is this uh, piece of parchment that's like nailed in front of it that's like out of order <laughs> see I picture it stone with like runes on it and when you close it the runes glow and then it creates the waffle inside create perfect waffle pocket <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, there's a very apologetic Lear that morning who uh, has to apologize that the waffle station is closed um she looks very tired uh, as she's uh, waves and says good morning to you guys. And uh, will quickly ask uh, Viola. Um, she will quickly say um, through a yawn. Are you sure Stayin is all right? I haven't seen her yet. Yes, I promise she's all right. I do not know why she chooses to not sleep in her bed. I don't really know where she has been sleeping. <laughs> But well, I, mean, I guess she always has her armor on. I'm, I imagine that at least she's not cold wherever she is. Well, and she's she's <laughs> very smart. I, I don't I doubt she's getting into any sort of trouble. Um, I guess I don't technically know if she's okay right now. I'm just assuming that because I haven't seen her yet this morning. But we're supposed to be meeting up before too long, so I'm sure she's fine. Yeah, as um, long as she I didn't get mugged, sure... she'll be fine. <laughs> Please have her check in with me. Uh, I'm I'm normally around here, or maybe in the gardens, or I might be at Saker's Keep. Um, I could be. I won't be too far from any of those areas, probably. Do you go to I'm Saker's to Keep often? Actually, I do. I really like it there. <laughs> like, do you know it enough that in your mind's eye, you could kind of like almost picture <laughs> a layout? <laughs> well. Could you draw a map? <laughs> high or low, Bo? <laughs> um, high. Okay. Um, she says, uh, she says, well, there are some areas I know a little better than others, um, but I've only been here a week or so just like you guys so i don't know it perfectly um i tend to spend more time in um, like some lottles uh prayer room and so maybe not a picture perfect i could tell you what the old b the beginning looks like like right at the entrance and those beautiful little hallways uh but that i mean did you want me to draw that out for you uh i mean no no it's fine viola and i just going over there we got some we have some uh things to praying yeah we're Yes. You know, I just oh, really no. feel like I need to go there and pray to <laughs> a guy with a hammer or something like that. So you're here God? I, did, I thought you weren't into the religious things. Did you change your mind? Yes, yeah, stay and convince me. <gasps> Not for her person, but you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, my boy. I wasn't going to cry again because Kira told me not to. But I'm so excited. That's okay. Viola will will kind of pat her on the back and just start rubbing her back a little bit. It's, it's... When the gods find a way to touch even the hardest of hearts, it fills me with so much faith. I could just explode with joy. Bo, I hope you have a wonderful time. I really do. And if you do see Stayin, can you ask her? Uh, I wanted to ask her something, but um, I haven't been able to find her. Um, so if you if you see her, can you tell her I wanted to ask her something? Yeah, sure. Why'd you want to I ask will. her? Well, I wanted to. 
Well, I wanted to ask her if she was interested in um, in helping. Uh, well, it's not very joyous, unfortunately, but you might have heard um, the warden that had uh, she had passed away on that uh, on the assignment. I, well, I guess you were uh, there. Yeah, Kim Chi. Yes. Klein. 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 <laughs> She's from a no, she, she's from a renowned uh, clan up in Highland Row, and we uh, are going to set up the funeral rites as best as we can here. And I wondered if Stain wanted to assist with that. So if I'm you want to ask sure her, that's something. Yeah, Stain loves dead enjoy, bodies. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what I've gathered so far. <laughs> maybe maybe. Viola's gonna just like kind of like elbow. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood. This is why I gotta go back and do the praying that we mentioned, because you know I gotta get my <laughs> my my act straight with Thun Hammer God in order to understand her death goddess. Well, she so... actually prays to Atala, and she could probably tell you all about it. And Atala is wonderful when it comes to souls and they're passing forward <laughs> to wherever it is they're going to go. She's the one who assists them. So I especially thought that she would be interested in this. But she hasn't been around, and I imagine no one's going to volunteer assignments for you guys if you're taking some time to rest. Then again, how can we have an assignment if our captain's not available? I hope she gets better soon, whatever's happening with her. And that's on the <gasps> prayer list, so... Yes. Namaste. Oh, no. <laughs> <You're laughs> <amazing. laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with that one, but namaste indeed. <laughs> Let's get start walking away. <laughs> oh, here, take some with you. And she was like, pulls out this. Uh, she pulls out uh, one of those little boxes that your bacon rose had come in, and she just fills it with some fruit and um, some some strips of bacon. And she has, uh, she gives you four of these little boxes. Um, if you see uh, snow uh, and, and stay in while you're out there, they really should have yeah. some breakfast. It's important. We will definitely up. pass that on. Also, just while I'm thinking about it, if you happen to see a polar bear around, could you just let me know? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a polar. There was, <laughs> and I tried to be friends with him, and he wasn't having it, so I would like a second chance, but have not been able to spot him yet. So just as a side note, if you see him around, or her, I guess I don't really know if it's a him or her, but if you see said polar bear, let me know, and then Viola will mm. follow Bo. She agrees and lets you guys go on your way. Um, <laughs> so... Viola and Bo, you make your way to Saker's Keep. Uh, an uneventful journey to Saker's Keep. Um, and you did have like the pastry, some arrive. pastries and fruit, right? We, we nabbed some, some of the continental. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you grabbed yeah, some for those two you as well. Mir gave us, us a little box of stuff. As well. Or if you wanted to grab something for now, too, that's fine. He's just going to grab oh. some of the free food. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's there for you. That's what the mess hall is for. Stock up. <laughs> As if it's, you know, there are hours for He doesn't time. know how long he's going to have no. access to the pike, so. <laughs> Maybe it's in the handbook. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> DM goes and makes a dent. You don't have that. <laughs> Lunch is between 6 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. <laughs> I'm sorry, breakfast is between 6 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Um, so, yes. You're welcome to munch on your way to Saker's Keep. You guys arrive at the entrance, uh, the familiar rectangular building. Um, Bo, oh, sorry, Snow and Stayin, you guys wake up to morning sun. It's a little bit cloudy today. Not crazy, but a little bit cloud. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, a warm <laughs> uh, 72 degrees and... Uh, it's going to be a scorcher today. <laughs> Beginning 72 degrees sounds wonderful for a morning. For 8 a.m. Do you know what yeah. it's going to feel at 4 p.m.? Also, do you know so how it's going to feel in heavy, I mean, in, in medium armor? <laughs> I don't care. That still sounds better than what we've been getting here the last oh, month. Oh, yeah. 
I would take 72. <laughs> yeah, at 8 a.m. <laughs> um, I'm 82 at 8 a.m. usually, so I'll take nice. 72. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. That's legit. Um, are you guys... <sighs> So are you guys going back around the side of the building the way you had come? Are you Is there a back door? There is a back gate. Um hey. Are we meeting at the gate? front door though? <laughs> are we meeting at front and or then go in the back so we all know to go in the back? We all had the plan. <laughs> wasn't discussed. No, it wasn't discussed. The they door. assumed <laughs> they assumed they were going through the front, so I mean Bo do. doesn't know that there's a back door. He hasn't spent enough time over there. Of course <laughs> you go through. Don't. We can go through the building and make our way to the front to y'all. Like, we can get some recon. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Snow's um, gone. Excellent. <laughs> you guys... So, so you two wake up, um, and there is still very little activity. You get the sense that Saker's Keep is not frequented, uh, necessarily, the same way that, say, you know, the Inquirer's District is... Uh, or the Inquirer's Ward is uh, frequented. Um, so you see one or two acolytes um, tending to the garden side of this long pathway on your way back up, um, who, when they see you, nod, uh, nod their heads, give a little wave, and continue about their business, as if they don't seem to mind that someone decided to sleep over in the cemetery. Um, they when you get back up, there you go. You get back t uh, up to the gate um, through it. There's a, sh a short little courtyard-ish area. And um, and then there's the entrance, the back entrance to the building itself. Um, there's two of these doors. So it doesn't matter too, too much, you realize, when you walk in. Because you're in this area of these, these long... Uh, this one long hallway. Stay, and this should look a little familiar to you. You were just here, uh, and Atala's prayer room is, I believe, back on this side of this the second um, hall. So there's a couple of these doors, each one decorated for whichever god uh, that it is intended for. Down another short hallway, you reach that familiar long hallway. Uh, this is the one where it had another series of doors for the gods and their prayer rooms. And then some side rooms. You see the one, Snow, you see the one where you had been taken when you were ill, one of those rooms. And then straight ahead is the foyer area. Um, this sort of like 40 foot cube room. Um, some columns. There's a stone bench um you didn't see a lot of acolytes as you were going through uh but anyone that you did see you know nodded in your direction uh did did viola and Bo walk inside to that little waiting room for your area um or were you waiting outside well Bo in his mind is just thinking that they would meet them outside so unless viola starts doing something that's He's fair. playing on standing I imagine, outside. I imagine S Snow <laughs> and Stay In can put two and two together of where to find you. Um, so you guys can reconnect. Snow doesn't. Aww. <laughs> Stay In will after. He's not thinking while. about that. <laughs> uh, so they will walk from inside Saker's Keep to outside Saker's <laughs> Keep and spot you two. So you, the four of you are back together. Good morning, everybody. All right. Um. So before we do all Good this, morning. is there is there like morning traffic coming through like the door and stuff like that? It does not. You are not getting any people coming through here. At so is there all. any people? Um, there's nobody right now. No. Okay. Nobody um, from outside of Saker's Keep. Only the white-robed acolytes. So real quick, before we uh, get the ball rolling in here, um, I realized last night we can't a hundred percent trust the guard. Because there is a chance that they aren't actual guard members. Um, I got oh. jumped last night. Oh, I know you're right. right. Well, I mean, I'm standing here, aren't I? 
Um, but anyway, you know that one guard that was by the gate that's just like, you guys can't go, and then we ended up going anyway? I believe that was the guy. Canyon? Yeah. Can Canyon. Uh, so he got jumped by two people in a guard outfit. And they were going to, I, I feel like they were probably going to finish him off, but then I kind of stumbled in and then they were like, oh, we can't leave any witnesses. And they kind of both jumped me. So then there was like a fight and all that. It's fine. And he's okay. And he said that there was a third one, but I guess the third one was gone by the time I came about because I didn't see a third one. So there's a chance that there's a couple of people gunning around, taking out guards, taking their uniforms and walking around on the upside and he's gonna grab out one of the, the guard pendant well the guards pendants because there was two of them he's like on the upside we got <laughs> we got them in case that comes up and he's gonna put them back so we're side. also part of the reason we shouldn't trust the guard but no we are part of the reason why we should trust the guard because we know about each other so wait, we should trust the guard or we shouldn't trust the okay, guard? Okay, actually, I take confused. that. I, I'm doubling back. So we don't entirely trust the guard. <laughs> unless unless it's a guard, probably, that right. canyon, I think we could trust. So if you see a canyon, you know you can trust him. That's about the only one I trust right now. <laughs> right. All right. Well, it's Storko, cool. so... obviously. Is he part of the guard? Watchman versus guard. Oh. So Bo is referring to the Watchmen that you guys need to be mind that he is saying you guys should be mindful gotcha. of. Guards okay. are that upper tier of the uh, guardianship. Oh, okay, okay. Guardian right. residence. All right. So I think the plan here though was right. I'm gonna get some invisible time. Was that what we were gonna do? I think we should. Honestly, I think we should start out by just wandering in because there's like no one here, and the only people who are here don't seem to care that we're here. So. I think we can just go. All right, but what about the respectful? restricted areas? I assume that this place has. Didn't seem to I mean, really. We haven't be. found them yet. Well, that's what you got to use your mind medallion about, right? Speaking of mind, do we? I mean, want... if I find someone, yeah. Mind mail. Mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can open up a link, and <laughs> um, I can still I only open up with two mail. of you. <laughs> Mind mail. <laughs> <laughs> so I can you, can, you got them too. Huh? Do you get them that? too. All right, so... Is there going to be a time where you get to do it with all three of us? Because I really feel we sad got, that Stan's missing We got We got to level up. Uh, it's the I, amount of... Yeah, it's it's how many... Injured. It's his proficiency <laughs> bonus. So once that goes up to a three, he could do the whole party. Um, oh, come on, I really don't mind. Um, but <laughs> okay, but if you did mind, <laughs> you see. Uh, All right, so I got a two, so it's good for two hours. <laughs> Took me a second. That should be plenty. All right, cool. You good to go? Oh, also, before we forget, Lear wants your help staying with burying a body. And we have snacks if you'd like some breakfast. Um, Kalein. the Kalein. I love snacks. Yeah. She didn't learn her death. So, Leah's been meaning to talk to you, but I guess she hasn't seen you. And there you go. I'll have to check in with her. She is very worried about you since you haven't been sleeping in your bed, which also, why have you not been sleeping in your bed? Uh, yeah, staying, isn't that weird? <laughs> He's grinning. Very weird, Snow. <laughs> I, I sometimes sleep better under the stars. It's what I grew up doing a lot. Okay. Well, next chance you get, I feel like you should really check in with Lear, because she is a bit of a worry ward. I will check in with Lear. I apologize for She worrying. also, if you ask, um, I think Bo might have alluded that you've gotten him hooked on the religion, so... Like hooked on phonics. <laughs> yeah, I told her I was all about. I told her I was all about the hammer god. Dual dear. Dual dear. Sure. I don't know how she bought it because I called him the hammer god, but <laughs> apparently. Uh, you'd be surprised. Sometimes the gods don't. Aren't as open with their names or as easy to remember. 
I called it Tyler Lady of the Roses for years. Yeah, that seems longer to say, really. You do what you can. But you know, could be, it might not be a bad place to start if you're wanting to just look around the keep to go hop into... Oh, hop so into you wanna... spare room. Floor. Yeah, but I mean, dual deal, I don't think, is where we want to go. Yes. Isn't that the god that um, Kiara? Kiara, yes. Why was she saying something about body parts? What would Stay and know about this? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Snow? Because I'm thinking no, no. body <laughs> parts, <laughs> pools of blood. I was going to go religion. If anyone would like to roll religion <laughs> for this, you are welcome to. Bo got a religion of... That's a natural 20. Eight. Or 22. <laughs> there you go. But I only got a five, so it's good that she's asking the question. Those two just... When their roles make sense, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I imagine Snow did not roll for that. Um, no. Okay. We've already Stan, talked about it. We, he indeed. knows. <laughs> Stan, um... You are familiar with the general lore of the god Dual Deer. Um, he is known as this grandiose figure, um, just larger than life. And because of that, it is known that oftentimes those who worship him will kind of um, differentiate each body part as uh, a different means of worship. So they might worship. Um, his head or his crown um, for prayers of wisdom and guidance. They might worship his, uh, you know, his actual hammer um, for strength or protection, things like that. So, but they will kind of delegate body parts because he is this larger than life figure. They will relate that to Bo and Viola. And she'll be giving oh. Snow some little glances while she does it. Just to see if he's check my work, Senpai. <laughs> no is ignoring it. He grabs the pastry and takes a bite and says, "Yeah, great. So, are we going to go and actually do this?" Let's, yeah, both started walking in. Uh, as you guys, uh, before you start walking, as you guys were discussing, um, as Stan is mentioning all this about Dual Deer, uh, you hear this voice uh, chime in, um, and actually, um, as you. <laughs> It's the most commonly uh, used part of Dual Deer's form generally is going to be the breastplate. Um, it's often recognized for valor and courage, uh, which is very well known among his followers that they uh, are very attuned to this type of uh, worship, um, if that helps your discernment. Hey, Mappy, do you have a map of this um, keep? Uh, as he was speaking, Jeremy, in fact, walks in. Uh, <laughs> Hop, he comes in, um, his long acolyte robes and his uh, hands are together, so it's just draping in front of him um, until he takes one up and pushes up his own spectacles and looks back at you. Um, so he is now standing uh, just inside of the doorway, um, and he, he looks at you. Sorry, you were asking about maps? <laughs> of the keep. No uh, flicks bow on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I imagine would there probably be something like that. Was there something in particular you were looking for? Uh, kind of like, you know, like when they made Saker's Keep and they probably... Do you have my other map as it happens? I don't no, I lost up. that. I'm sorry. But you know how oh. when they made <laughs> Saker's Keep, and they probably had like an idea of like this room's gonna be here and they kind of like put it all out on like a grid of sorts maybe like blue, blue parchment and yeah. then they just kind of built it after that do you have like those kind of things it's very likely but i'm afraid we can't just hand that out uh there's a limit to i imagine what we are going to share with people just moseying in unless you are here uh to build something but i imagine you're not why yes i am actually here to build something and he's gonna grab the crowbar from his backpack <laughs> that's unusual yeah so 
in order to get building though, I kind of need to know like I need to know <laughs> which ones are like a be support beam stuff like that. I need to I need an idea. No. Oh, Bo, um, Bo, I Bo. have an idea. Maybe I could just ask him to like take me on a tour or something. That's and as you guys are plan. talking, he's, he's kind of like peeking around you and then looking back at you, um, catching up to whatever it is you were saying. Are you waiting on someone, Jeremy? So can I roll a persuasion for that? Um, <laughs> to convince him that you're a builder? To convince him to give me a map. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> you can, you can roll with disadvantage. Deception. Even though I have a prop? <laughs> I have a prop. You can roll with deception <laughs> with disadvantage. That's not a prop. <laughs> I mean, it can be whatever he needs it to be. That's fine. He it already very solution. much does not believe you, and he may or may not be, like, one level above hostile in okay. his very sickly way. <laughs> well, you want to know something funny? I got a 15 and an 18, which goes up to a 22, Plus psionic is going to make it a 23. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me know if I need to burn that. Um, a 23, you said? Yeah, it's got to a 23 because of a plus one from psionic. So if it 22 makes it, then he can doesn't need to worry about the die. Um, you don't... Uh, no, it's still a failure. Oh, okay, then he doesn't need to worry about it. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to burn it if it fails, <laughs> right? Correct. Correct. Excellent. Um, he just—he's looking at you, and then Stan had asked a question, uh, so he he looks back at her, and uh, he, he says, uh, "We're supposed to have a uh, a pickup today. Uh, someone's coming in uh, to uh, collect an item, and we are we're going to be selling it, and I'm very excited uh, to make more money that we can put towards the keep. It'll be lovely. That's wonderful. Can I ask what this item is? I don't. I'm curious about what the keep would have that would be so valuable. Mm-hmm. It's this. Uh, it's this golden, this beautiful golden crowd. It's just gold all around, and uh, it's it's very. Very pretty. Um, I think you it see was, it was uh, yeah, briefly. Uh, it was being packaged. Um, I think Gawara was taking care of all of that. I they don't let me do very much over there, so I had to stand at a distance and look. But um, it so was you being saw where they're storing it. Is uh, that what, that's when you saw it? Well, it's not in full storage now. It's uh, any minute now. Um, Someone should be coming to pick it up so they can take it to Zaley. To, to snow, Bo is going to be. Check mm. his mind. Check his mind. He might. He might have it in his mind <laughs> where it's at. Stan's <laughs> gonna cast detect magic. Okay. <laughs> detect magic, our old friend. Hello, detect magic, my old friend. Uh, the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. I think that's going to be a lot, though. 30 feet. Those um, stone yeah, things. I mean, um, I think if that's what you're saying, it's not quite. I'll give it to you. I mean, like, there's those stones that are down the mm -hmm. hall. It seems further than 30 feet, potentially, but maybe you're standing right on the edge of the wall or something. Um, uh, on him, um, he has. Where are you, uh, Jeremy? Our old friend Jeremy. Um. High or low, Stan? <laughs> low. Okay. Okay. Um. You don't know anything uh, in particular other than standard uh, magics. Uh, that would be, you know, keep the lights, the, the the flames in the sconces are going, or the cleansing stones. Um, some maybe uh, items used for prayer in the smaller prayer rooms um, to the side. Someone else was rolling something? Uh, no, Bo is trying to get Snow oh, to use okay. his medallion, but that wasn't um, affirmed, but he's also going to message a, um, 
So I have an oh, idea, I Snow, wasn't, and I wanna, wasn't low. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna go on this bayou. Um, I'm thinking Jeremy probably has some keys in this for this place. Um, so I'm thinking about trying to grab them. What do you think about this plan? <laughs> I've heard worse plans. Feel kind of bad for the guy, but honestly, go for it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try to do that. I don't know if you want to lend me a hand any way that you can as I go to do this. Um, sure, I'll, uh, I'll I'll talk to him, keep him, keep him distracted. 10-4. <laughs> roger, roger. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's that late in the morning yet, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... so Bo can roll with advantage then with the help action being used. Uh, what are you attempting to do? Sleight of hand keys. He's hoping that Jeremy has some keys since he works there and goes places in there. Okay. So Jeremy is wearing this like full on cloaky, roby thing. Um, and you are attempting to pickpocket some keys off of him. Yeah, I mean, if someone got if someone got specifically ten gold pieces or six gold pieces off of Bo the way he had it, I think he could get some keys off of this person. <laughs> yeah, With the high admittedly, I'm thinking if Jeremy has keys on him. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can. What is what is Snow doing to um, to distract him? Uh, Snow is. First, he's going to uh, cast Minor Illusion um, to create the sound of uh, someone approaching um, from like a distance because I can change the volume. Um, and since Jeremy said he's waiting for someone to arrive, he's going to make that sound. Um, Snow's going to look around kind of like confused because there's no one in sight um, and hoping that Jeremy is also confused by that. And then Snow is going to engage him in conversation. So who's coming to buy this? I mean, that sounds really expensive. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um... Also, are they coming invisibly? Because that's really weird. Yeah, I'll, so Bo, go ahead and roll your um, roll your sleight of hand. You may roll it with advantage. Um, and Jeremy, as when he heard the sound, is going to head towards the uh, towards the entrance and look out. Um, he says, uh, "It should be." I was told that uh, there were some peace watchmen that were coming uh, in order to pick it up. They deliver it to Lady Poppy Hinta. Uh, she's the, uh, the royal ambassador uh, to the novice. Uh, that, that she was going to arrange whatever it was with Zaley. Uh, of course, if it involves Zaley, they can afford it. A beautiful gold crown. I, heck, I, I, I'd probably look pretty cool in something like that. I bet you would, honestly. I think I would. And maybe, maybe I could get some uh, some proper spectacles from uh, Kepner's Kamea and they could make it match. So Bo got a dirty 20. Um, and then if you add the psionic, it would be a 26. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, you, uh, you manage, as he's going by, to get your hand in just the right spot. Um, <laughs> and you pull away... But it's not a uh, it's not a key that you find. Um, you manage to slip off of him what appears to be um, what does he have? He has an it looks like an iron uh, it looks like a coin, um, but it's not like a it's not like a standard coin of like you'd use for purchase. It's a little larger. Um, this this iron coin, um, and it, it looks a little looks a little funny, kind of kind of artistic, 
Um, but it doesn't look like it's attached to anything. It doesn't look like a there's a hole for a pendant and a chain. It just looks like an iron coin um, with little divots uh, going along in a circle uh, around the front. That's what he had in his in his pocket. And based off of the fact that Stan has detect magic on, there's nothing magical about this. You do not note anything magical about this. Okay. Stan didn't. And note was that about was it. that needing to use his psionic die or no? Like, do you need a twenty six um, to get that? A twenty six. Um. Or is it twenty five? No, no, no. Okay. No, cool. I think that would be fine. Thirty right. twenty is fine. So, cool. Jeremy, I imagine that a crown like this is probably like locked up. Or. Well, it it's uh it's currently uh I, I believe uh that our head celebrant still has it. He's preparing for uh, the Peace Watch, and they should be... Oh, oh there they are! And um, he points out the door, and you do see now coming up um, this small uh, town wagon um, pulling up. There are... Ooh, there are... Uh, you can see right now, you see two people, uh, one up front with the reins of the horse and one person next to him, but it is a, a wagon. You, it looks like there might be someone behind him, um, but it's kind of hard at the distance. As it gets closer, it appears there's uh, about five people uh, all in the Peace Watch uh, cloak and brooch that are pulling up to Saker's Keep. Um, they pull the horses to a stop, begin filing out, and they don't seem to pay you any mind uh, other than brief nods as they uh, start to walk inside. Uh, to which no. Jeremy is uh, trying to get you guys to kind of move aside. Uh, and he's motioning for them to. But he's going to stand in the way. To Jeremy, he's motioning them to come in. But he's going to stand <laughs> in the way. Okay. No mind links to Bo and tells him, you need to tell the others, or Viola, I guess, to keep them occupied. You and I can go in. Oh, well... We need to get there first. We do need to get there first. Um, I was thinking I could try and convince them I'm part of their watch. I got the badge. But we... That wouldn't help us get in. I mean, it wouldn't help us get in, but they, in with us. they know where the crown is, so it would help us get to where the crown is, then we could nab it and run. That sounds like a terrible plan. Okay, well... <laughs> How else are we gonna know where it is? We don't know. And the one of them we is would look. Uh, one of them is clearing his throat. Excuse me, son, I need to go through. But it's going to um, it's going me, are you still the peace watch? Is really <laughs> He's going to a cough in his face. I'm, I'm no, sorry, I am, I'm sorry, I'm ill, and I'm here for help, he's going, um, just, you're just mind me, it's very, it's people. very contagious, um, and so, no. and he, so he, I just uh, need to get inside, so he's gonna keep walking, and walk kind of, like, ill as he goes in front of them inside. <laughs> Snow is using, him. no, he's going inside Snow ahead uses, of them, like, uh, trying, yeah. So you are moving inside. Snow they uses precipitation to soil the floor where where Bo was standing. <laughs> soil it how? <laughs> that's just a thing that it can do. Yeah, that's you how instantaneously it like. soil an object no longer than one cubic foot. So this now the, where Bo is standing just looks like a mess <laughs> in the doorway. How? It just looks how like a mess Bo? there. Soil the floor, Snow. This is your one opportunity. <laughs> He's got baggy it pants. Looks, it looks, uh, <laughs> it just looks like really brown and dirty, and there's like little lumps of who knows what. You probably don't want to look too closely. <laughs> and there's also, uh, he's as soon as he does that, he's going to do it again. Um, because I can have up to three of these effects active at one time, and it now also smells really bad in the doorway. <laughs> so, Bo's, as he gets as he gets farther away, and I feel like this would just completely fail, but he's just going to try it because it's the only thing that he put in his book. 
he's also going to try and just make it seem like the soiling has spread to the guy's like feet using his vested digitation. <laughs> but <laughs> he's not very, it's his first time <laughs> trying to do it freehand. So he's just going to be like, he's just going to kind of like do muffle it. what's needed and then try to do it. But it doesn't really, <laughs> it's not really going to work. Do you want to try and roll for this? Yes. In fact, oh, if I could. Oh, that is just. Disgusting. So here, hold on, hold on. Before you touch those dice. Watch out. <laughs> because let's make this perfectly plain. You have not leveled. Oh no, I know that. Have, you do not have a level in wizardry in the least bit. Yeah, this is uh, purely than... him attempting like he's like active, like this is <laughs> this is active time training. <laughs> Just he saw it so... freshly done from <laughs> snow, so he's trying to not entirely mimic it, but kind of like follow the follow the idea of it to see if he could just attempt so I've anything. I've heard tell in the Dungeons and Dragons deep lore circles that there is such a thing as a super disadvantage where you roll three dice and take the lowest roll. <laughs> I've heard tell of this. Would you like to would you like to be the first roll of this I've ever seen in my entire life where you roll three dice and you, you take the lowest roll? Lowest roll is a four. Excellent. Yeah, both. <laughs> I had a uh... I had a fifteen, an eighteen, and a four. Excellent. That is <laughs> how it is truly neat and just. Uh, you <laughs> you are trying to focus his energy, like maybe pull something from your past and just all your just. Once yeah, he realizes he's just, he's just gonna copy and, <laughs> and, <it's... laughs> and cough even more. Ta da! Ta -da. <laughs> No, yeah, he was like trying to do the vocal component. It's not working, and he just. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so let That's me just. That's not the word. <laughs> let me just pull this together here. So, Bo started moving inside. These gentlemen are coming in behind you of varying heights. Um, they seem mainly humanoid. Um, with uh, one dwarven heighted fellow. Uh, coming inside, they had noted stay and kind of gasp for a moment at this walking suit of armor uh, before continuing inside. Um, and as they are stepping inside, is that when the floor is now notably soiled? When when they are now approaching inside? I was trying to put it in front of them where Bo was standing in the doorway, so okay. that they might not step through the doorway. <laughs> uh. They... Because Bo was trying to block them. Okay. Um, ones behind uh, the gentleman in the front who appears to probably be in charge of the other four, he doesn't even seem to care, honestly. He seems like he starts stepping forward, uh, is... not thinking of it. And if Bo is still in the way, he is not opposed to moving. Have Bo they physically. passed the doors? He's about to, as he's about to move you physically out of his way, because he seems to be reaching a limit, and now it smells really bad. Bo's going to <laughs> message to Snow, find a second way in, and he's going to close the doors. <laughs> and he's going to crowbar him shut. <laughs> okay, one step at a time. We're going <laughs> to... Oh, one step at a man. Time. Um... As you're trying to shut the door in his face, uh, give me... <sighs> <laughs> this is an act of desperation. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> um, first, give me opposed dexterity. Just a straight dexterity check. Which Bo has been so great about. <laughs> so about like earlier when I was talking about like reactive um inspiration. Good act <laughs> retroactive inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna inspire you guys a little today, wasn't I? Yeah, I mean we all role played Man. pretty well. Guys mostly. did wonderfully today. Yeah. And Cassie yeah. snort laughed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's instant inspiration right there. Um see the thing is no, you, okay. You wanted to roll this with advantage. 
I will use the uh, the oh. earned inspiration that you forgot you to give use... me today. <laughs> yeah, no, your, uh, your dual beer situation would have earned it. That was a good one. That made me laugh. Oh, yes. <laughs> my first roll was a two. My second one's a 19 plus All three. Right. So 22. <laughs> okay, that is better than this man's as you... Uh, you slam the door before he has an opportunity to kind of like even put his foot in the way and, and stop it. Um, and you start to push the crowbar in. Um, okay, they are now on the outside of this door. Uh, and you hear some shouts. It's a little bit unclear. It's a it's a pretty weighty door. Quarantine! Quarant this place, the whole place is under quarantine. <laughs> six feet rule. Fix six. <laughs> I get six of the apartment. <laughs> you hear the shouts uh, that seem to be like command of some kind, and then you hear footsteps leaving. Okay. What are we seeing outside as this is oh, happening? What's good? Yeah, there what's going not... on outside? <laughs> Who is outside still? Everybody else. Everybody All but no. If I was the one ahead of you guys were inside. No. no. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's okay. why I both said I find another I way in. Yeah, we're still in the foyer area. Um, no. Okay, so outside you see um, you see the uh, who appears to be in charge. Uh, he he looks from the door and he kind of like hits the door and is looking a little bit confused maybe. And he turns to you guys um, and he's like, "What the heck is going on here? We are on orders." I oh, apologize. Our friend is not well. Door. We brought him here to get him some help. He had a troubling experience last night. It hasn't been right since. I don't I... care what this is about. I'm... We need to be inside. Oh, you know, there's a back door. Perfect. <laughs> what? Got... What's so, and, uh, what's so urgent? <laughs> oh, Stan told him about a back door. Why would she <laughs> tell him about a back door? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think she's a very good liar. I don't think it's something she can do. Where's the back door? So you're aware. I don't know. I didn't even know there was a back door. Can Snow <laughs> beat them over there? <laughs> He's going to go over to um, Snow, where's the back door? As soon as they're out of sight, Stade's going to knock on the door and try to get Bo to open it from the front so they can get in before. That's fair. Um, they, they get around they to the back. Around, they go around uh, the side of the it's building. It's a big building. It's a decently sized building. It's true. Bo, open up. Okay. Uh, and they, uh, two, Bo, two disappear around, around back, one side. Thing. Okay, he moves Three the crowbar. The other way. They are now going on either side of the building. He takes out the, he moves the crowbar, opens up oh, the there's door. there's five of them? There are five total. There's one who seems to be in charge and four of his little, his buddies. Where and then is once Jeremy? He, once right. he closes it Jeremy again. Is very confused and, and like kind of looks a little sickly himself because now there is this disgusting poo smell over once, his keep. Once uh, the three of them are in, he closes the it door. It only so lasts a minute, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, should we ask Jeremy if he, know, like, if he knows exactly where the crown is? Oh, good idea. And he's going to grab Jeremy and pull him <laughs> as he closes the door. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> And then yeah, once he closes it, the beast watch. once he closes it, he's going to take both the centaurs that he got yesterday and he's going to use them to seal it shut because he doesn't want to lose his crowbar. <laughs> you need to stop this immediately. They are here on official He's going to slap Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, Don't just Jeremy, I need you to listen. I need you to focus. Where is you don't know this? You my map and now you hit me. Jeremy, oh. those those guys oh. are, they are fakers. Jeremy, I'm terribly sorry. We are on order. They are pretended. <laughs> I got jumped by a group of them yesterday. They aren't the real watch. You have no proof of this. He grabs the badges. <laughs> they've, been, they've been stealing badges. <laughs> ask. you've been stealing maps. No, ask Kanye. <laughs> Kanye knows. <laughs> <laughs> Canyon. <laughs> we don't have time for this. Jeremy, we are on very important orders. We were tasked by Captain Nora to keep this crown safe because we're the ones who delivered it in the first place. And these men, we have very good reason to believe, are here to actually steal it and not deliver it like they're supposed to. So we need you to lead us to that crown as quickly as you are able to, good sir. Well, 
me a persuasion check. Uh, Jeremy, persuasion or deception. Moment. What about intimidation? Persuasion or <laughs> uh, that didn't sound as much intimidation as like pleading. What if we add a dagger to his throat? I would rather. I would <laughs> well, much. I would I much rather deception over intimidation. <laughs> I mean, if we need to intimidate somebody, I'll go with deception over over those anyway. <laughs> you about to turn it into intimidation if you don't hurry. <laughs> uh, that is a uh, 25. Nice. Deception. Um, okay. It's your moment, Jeremy. It's your moment to be a hero. <laughs> um, Jeremy looks at you and, and uh, he, he's notably distressed. He's kind of starting to sweat a little and uh, he, he's looking at the door and then looking all around the room and, and he says, like, Captain Dora up already? Okay, Jeremy, for the goodness of Hammer God, can you please <laughs> just make this quickly and I'll give you a bloody map back. No. Now just tell us where oh, this really crown is. <laughs> Where's the crown? Jeremy, we need to hurry. Come we on, don't have We don't have time for questions right now, my friend. There, but I can get it. I don't know what... You're essentially stealing from the from the city. You All right, this is what this is what's gonna happen, Jeremy. We're not trying to steal it, Jeremy. This is what's We're gonna happen. We're trying to make sure. Okay, 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 okay. I'll get it. I'll I'll be right back. I'll get. I'll get yeah, it. we're coming I... with you, Jeremy. You can't come. Jeremy, back that's enough now. talking. Now we need some walking. So let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> He would. <laughs> what well, my thinking is, if they end up getting there at the same time, and there's only one invisible person, that we're kind of. Oh my god! I can just hold it, and yeah, it will the also be invisible. All right, this I've is done persuasion. this before. This is persuasion, so that's a persuasion. nine so far. Ten. Okay. <laughs> Ten. Psionic. Yes. Oh, just let him go. I'll follow. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah. He 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 says. Just wait here, and I'll I'll go get it. I probably I'll, I'll be I'll be. But right just gonna grab him by the ear, and he's gonna pull him in a direction. Ow! No! 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 no stop! Go. No! Stop! Oh, stop! 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 Yes. Jeremy, go. Okay. Jeremy, I'm go. I'm so sorry, go. Jeremy. Be a hero. Oh, Bo's gonna summon a, a knife as Jeremy looks back and be like, "You better hurry, Jeremy." I need to start it. <laughs> he hurries out of uh as soon as as soon as Jeremy is no longer facing us, I cast invisibility on myself and follow after. Do you okay. think that would have went better if I offered him this biscuit first? <laughs> no. I don't even know. We're in so much trouble. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine. Stealing from oh, where's the is... stay in, where's the back door? We can still cut them off. Stan will point to where the back door is. But I was going to run at full speed towards the direction of the back door. Down the halls and look. Yeah, he's going. His full okay. speed is fast. Um. His full speed is fast. <laughs> it's 105. It's My full speed is fast. It's 105 <laughs> feet. Um, okay. You guys. Okay. <laughs> we... Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted a simple, I've got a map ready, I'm ready to roll some dice, and y'all are like, no. Prestidigitation. We get to fight okay. Peace Watch? <laughs> I bet we already took out two of these parties. I'm ready to go. Okay. Um, oh so help me get kicked out of the argument. It's good thing it's so early in the morning, okay. nobody's interfered except for Jeremy. <laughs> it's... Well, okay. Come on, Jeremy. Bo, you make a beeline. Uh, you, you run down the hall, you come across that first long hallway, you skirt down <laughs> one of the short, the short, um, perpendicular hallways, um, you are feeling your way through it. It seems like it's a big building, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a couple of, you hear some shouts of, are you okay? Hey, what's going on? As from another acolyte that you, I imagine, run past. Um, and as you are coming up, give me another, uh, Give me another dexterity check, please. All right. Oh my gosh. I'll leave these dice. I should have said seven. Ah. Uh, it wasn't man, much when, better. And you have all those nat 20s Actually, before. <laughs> it was because he's fighting. That's the only time he's good. 
<laughs> when he's fighting and when he's doing bad things. <laughs> okay. Is that a seven? Yeah. Excellent. Um, you race down um, the second of these shorter perpendicular hallways, um, and now you are in the last of the two long hallways. You see these doors. You find another one of those um, straightaways, the, the short ones, and you make a beeline to it just as you see um, a group of the, the captain's side um, or the, the leader's side uh, stepping in um, of this. There's no... <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it, this open this open doorway, uh, stepping in with two of the guys behind him, um, and he sees you, and he just glares. Did he pass any doors <laughs> on the way this way so that we could kind of, like, seal These it These are off? all just, they're just open hallways. Uh, there's no doors to the halls. There's oh, doors inside the what's above rooms. them? A ceiling. <laughs> A ceiling a with ceiling. a ceiling Please with do not like make sinkers keep down. a ceiling with like a chandelier. <laughs> not chandeliers. The light sources are on the walls. Why so advanced? Bo, is everything okay? <laughs> but I was going to throw a warning psionic dagger at them. Oh my god! Are you rolling for an attack? Yes. Oh. Okay, give me just a moment. Because these um, are the guys from earlier. Here's these are the ones that he closed the door on. Yeah, right? it's just yes. This is the big guy who was up front, who was up ready to move <laughs> you aside, and two of his his men. And you don't see the other two. How the high up are the ceilings? Oh, you're asking a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say. It sounded like it was pretty grandiose, here. like when we came in here the first time. It sounded like they were really hey, high. I want, I want to say like, is thirty or forty feet? Does that make sense? Oh, I <laughs> thought they were higher. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, high. It's it's a it's not a it's not a tall building the way that like, um, Stormwatch is or Captain's Command is. It's not like grandiose like that. It's kind of a squat building actually. <laughs> it's just long and inside is just really beautiful, just very pristine, peaceful. It was peaceful. <laughs> Not yes. anymore. So what I was going to do, actually, instead of throwing a dagger, he's going to throw... He's going to... Okay, well, here's the thing. This is... This is... <laughs> he is going to throw yeah. on the ground. He's going to pour out his oil flask. And then he's going to use his... <laughs> um, he is going to uh, uh, <laughs> use his tinderbox. <laughs> and he's going to light it. He's oh not, my gosh! <laughs> like I'm picturing it's stone, so like it is. Yeah, so it shouldn't cause yeah, like yeah. the entire place to burn down. Nope, but just he a wants big old flaming oil pile. Yeah, one that they would have to walk through. Heck yeah! Correct. Yeah, so he's going to pour that since he sees them down <laughs> the hallway. He's just gonna quickly pour that and then light a fire. Okay. Amazing. I'll get back to you. Snow, you're following? <laughs> following Jeremy. Excellent. Um, okay. Invisibly. Indeed. So Jeremy is kind of, he, he is hurrying. Um, he's kind of going at a jog. Um, you're behind him. He goes to uh, the same first doorway that you had gone to um, mm -hmm. when you were ill. Ill. And in, but instead of turning into the next mm -hmm. room uh, on the left hand side, uh, he actually heads uh, a little bit further, and there's another uh, there's another room over there. Um, he uh, is kind of he kind of nervously knocks on the door, just a frantic like, "Oh, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry." And um, is there anything on the door? It's, um, it's a... Like any indication? Of what kind of a room it is. Is he ratting us so out? Much. Jeremy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to do? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, the door, it's, it's, it is a little more ornate, um, maybe, than, uh, some of the other doors. But it doesn't have, like, a placard on it, per se. Black okay. Um, but he knocks. Okay. And, um... No waits. Mm -hmm. And soon, uh... He, he seems to wait a moment, and then he turns the the handle and opens, 
It opens into a, a decent sized little uh, sitting room. Um, it's relatively plainly decorated. There's a table, some chairs. Uh, it looks kind of like a small meeting room. There's manners of books and such and other uh, healing type paraphernalia on the walls. And um, sitting on the other side of this table, he's appeared to be perhaps looking over a book. Um, there's a man, he has a little paler than normal skin. He's completely shaven, has kind of half hooded eyes, just looking very calm, just starkly different than Jeremy looks. Uh, he is also <laughs> in a white robe, but there's like a, a gilded trim to what he's wearing. And he looks up with these pale eyes. Uh, he looks up at Jeremy. And beside the book, there is this uh, wooden box. Um, it is. It has a lock on it. Um, it is seated beside him. Uh, and he looks up at Jeremy and before he even speaks, Jeremy uh, kind of deeply, deeply bows, um, and he says, I'm very sorry, uh, head celebrant. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, 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 the, the Peace Watch is here. Um, and it's, um, and, and they're here. And, um... <laughs> Snow, give me a give me a perception check. He just lost as his map. Man, <laughs> he just snapped. <laughs> uh, as the man um, behind the door, uh, behind the table, again, he doesn't seem moved at all. He doesn't seem phased at all. He just nods. Um, he takes hold of the he he unlocks the box and he opens it. Snow, how'd you do? Uh, perception? A perception, yes, please. That is ten. Okay. Um, you see well enough that when he opens the box, it's it's very nicely lined. Uh, it has this, like, black soft lining in it. Um, and it's sized to fit this golden crown. Um, what you don't see on this crown are any of those rubies that were originally on it. He closes the box, locks it. Does it look like the same crown without the rubies? Or does this look like a different gold crown? It very much looks like the same crown without the rubies, uh, even with little insets um, for where those rubies might have previously <laughs> been. Um, he closes the box okay. and slides it across the table, nods his head. Jeremy, uh... Snow's going to go over to the box, um, place his hand on it, and just breathe for half a second to see if he has an inclination to steal it. He's waiting to see if that allure that the crown used to have is still there. Okay. Or if this is altogether different. Um, okay. If there is something... As you're waiting a breath, it does not, uh, it does not appear to fall to you, uh, unless you wanted to do a specific arcana check, which I will allow. Might as well. Um, that is an eight. <laughs> okay. Yes, this, it feels like this is... The, the crown just <clears throat> it's like it's dead it's minus like it's not rubies. doing anything minus what? okay minus the rubies yeah I thought you were trying to say minus hey. your role like is your intelligence minus? no oh my gosh <laughs> no no he has expertise in Arcana <laughs> yeah. um, I rolled a 2 okay. <laughs> I got up to an 8 <laughs> very quiet dead crown or just an ordinary crown. Uh, right. Aramis um, uh, reaches over um, and 
goes to lift the box. Now uh, goes over the mine link to Bo. The crown has had the rubies removed and it doesn't seem to have the same properties that it had before. I think we need to find the rubies. All right. Um, I'm, I'm kind of buying you some I, time. I think they can take the crown. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Great. Fantastic. Well, Excellent. <laughs> maybe they could take the crown. We're going to see what happens here. <laughs> Yeah, and on Bo's side of things, um, you see <laughs> <laughs> these men are standing on, they're standing in front of this oil slick that's been set on fire, um, and they look up at you. When they look up, he's going to use his <laughs> tattoo to appear as the person that he tried biting yesterday. Okay. I was really hoping you were going to say the wanted poster. He strikes again. I consider doing that at the door, but now he's trying to like get the point <laughs> across that he knows the lower secret. So he transforms um, into what he believes is one of their comrades. While you're doing that, please give me a perception check at disadvantage now. Because you are doing something else. Well, there's a four and a seven. And hanging so... out at the front door. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. And we probably should know what Viola and Stan are up to as, uh... Stan's yeah. just, like, keeping watch, <laughs> keeping an eye on the two ways that people she's seen people go. And she's <laughs> really hoping this comes to a peaceful resolution. Excellent. Viola? <laughs> That's exactly, I'm sure it will. that's exactly what Viola's doing. I mean, I think if Bo or Snow one, or even Stayin wanted her to go and do something specific, she would. But as of right now, she's just kind of hanging out and seeing what happens. Bo got a six. Wonderful. Even better. <laughs> so, um, Bo. <laughs> Um, where did my... I got overexcited and opened too many windows, and we're gonna have to close some of these bad boys so I can find what I'm doing. Here we are! Um... Okay. Oh. Does a 15 hit your armor class? Yes. Does? Fantastic. Um, as you feel this sudden striking against your body. <laughs> Uh, you take eight damage as you feel something crack against the back of your head um, oh. and uh, are just able to see those three other um, <laughs> watchmen who had gone the other direction and found the other of the oh. two exits come around to your side. Um, stay in. Crap. I don't think this is going to come to a peaceful resolution. <laughs> I was going you to know? message to Viola. There was two back doors. I didn't know that. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, I'm kind of surrounded between three people and a fire and then more people. Viola reiterates <laughs> that to stay in. Like... Thank I got you, an idea. Great. Bo's going to disengage and just run on the ceiling. Yeah, um, there you go. Excellent. Boy. As we're going to have you guys roll initiative uh, to keep this in a little bit of order. And uh, we're going to start our next session with a little bit of combat. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So should we just roll initiative next time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but Bo is on the ceiling. But Bo is on the ceiling. Well, 
I mean, you and only yeah, just now said we're an initiative, so... I mean, he also got a surprise <laughs> strike against the back of your skull. Was, okay. And, and he reacted. I have a whole two weeks to think about it. <laughs> oh, I know. So long. That is very long. Who wants to play next week? Sure. Me. Wait. You guys serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mainly looking at Catherine, because <laughs> Catherine has a, a life and I don't, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Excellent. We'll talk about it. Um, our next set schedule is for two weeks, which is uh, September 26th. 26th? There you go. Well, oh, this was supposed to be, uh, hey, we're going to throw oh, wait, some actually, combat I can't next Tuesday. Tuesday. I just remembered I do have something. I can't either. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, curriculum night. <laughs> See, other people can have a live too. What's with you guys having a life and whatever? Gosh, That's I hate it. Lame. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> oh gosh, I should probably say goodbye to people then. Hey, this has been exciting. And um, what I need to remember, and what's gonna be a lot easier in the future when I have my new computer probably this weekend, hooray, um, I'll be able to have all sorts of maps waiting for different areas of buildings and not just the atrium where this fight was supposed to happen. Guys, <laughs> just let it happen. No, I'm gonna harass you. So this is a planned fight. Interesting. Definitely Wait, not. so was the atrium supposed to be designed like the place where Bo got into a fight at, or what? What was that? No, those were uh, those were also prepared in case there was combat situation. Uh, I was ready for that. I was ready for the training room with uh, Cynthia and Viola, and I was ready for a square. A lovely square for you guys to fight in. And now, mm. now we're in this weird C-shaped hallway. So let's see what happens. I'll have to make a map for that. <laughs> you did it to yourself? Yeah, by letting you guys play. <laughs> I thought there was already a map of Saker's that looks Keep. Like that, so. What you already there working is a map of Saker's Keep. There is a full map of Saker's Keep, but I don't want to upload that to Roll20 and have you guys try to open it, because it's huge. Yeah, I'm just saying all you have to do Comparable. is basically look at that and then make a more zoomed in version no no yeah oh okay, that's exactly yeah. what i did okay. for the atrium too okay which i'm now calling the atrium and not the foyer so it's the atrium there you go How's oh. The my notes? oh um actually can i throw one more thing at you to make you guys hate even more that we have to wait two weeks jeremy's um, dead <laughs> <laughs> Viola and Bo would have seen it. Um, the other two would not, but um, Snow's mailbox might be glowing. <laughs> I was so going to anyway. ask about the mailboxes. I, I, so I anyway, hey, that's where we're going to end our session for tonight. Um, thank you guys. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong outro. Here it is. Thank you from all of us here at Tales from the Catacombs. Catch up and recapture your favorite moments by subscribing to the channel right here on YouTube, where we were streaming tonight. Uh, we appreciate you guys journeying with us to bring clean, wholesome content. Clean. Am I allowed to even say that anymore? Clean, wholesome content to the world of tabletop RPGs. Uh, we upload new content from our tabletop adventures here all the time. We promise it is worth your while. And soon we will determine precisely when you guys can catch these sessions live uh, twice a month. We play twice a month. And if we return to Twitch, then the link will be in the description below. A particularly huge thank you to my players. Uh, David, who plays Bo, he streams on Twitch under You Hate to See It. Catherine, who plays Stayin, she dabbles in her geek circles on Twitter and Instagram under A Catholic Geek, and also helps run Inkwells and Anvils, a place for storytellers to pursue the good, the true, and the beautiful with their worlds and their words. You can find them on Instagram and on Twitter at Inkwells Anvils. No and, just Inkwells Anvils. Uh, Cassie, who plays Viola and can be found on Instagram and, uh, at coffee, K-O-F-F-E-E-H and now also on Twitter under K-O-F-F-E-E-J-H. A little off the rhythm, but we, we love her anyway. And Josh, who plays Snow, and you can, five, uh, you can wave to him uh, when you find him right here with us. I am Brenna, I'm your storyteller for this adventure, and we will see you back here next time. Safe travels until we meet again.
No more poo smell, please. <laughs> <laughs>